and welcome to the uh, special Board of Commissioners, Rider Township Board of Commissioners meeting to discuss the budget. Um, will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we will begin tonight with public participation. Are there any comments from the public? No? Okay. Move right along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then we will move on to the 2019 proposed budget discussion. Um, Mr. White, will you lead us in this sure. discussion? Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, do you want to just take it away? Sure. All right. Uh, so what we were hoping to cover tonight uh, or at least walk out of here with an idea of tonight is um, reviewed uh, some updated numbers with regard to 18 and how they roll into 19. Uh, and that's following up on a discussion we had late at the last board meeting with updated numbers on 18 with regard to the borrowing and um, how that will impact the general fund when we return the sewer money. Um, and then touch on uh, capital funding, sanitary sewer, and then um, come to some resolution hopefully with the community organizations um, so that next Monday on the agenda will be the introduction of the budget ordinances. Um, what we did last year was the ordinances that were included <laughs> in the board packet uh, had blanks in them because we hadn't yet gotten down to the final numbers yet uh, we did so at that meeting then the board voted to introduce the ordinances with the millage and sewer rate numbers in them and then we advertised that um, <coughs> ahead of the first meeting in December for the adoption so I think it's um, December 11th or December 10th whatever that first date is in December will be the adoption so um, tonight's uh, our last chance to dedicate the entire agenda onto this. And, uh, obviously, the budget will have competition next week uh, with everything else on the agenda. So, hopefully, we can get through some of those items tonight uh, and then set us up for um, maybe either filling in the blanks next Monday or maybe we haven't done going into that. But um, I'll start uh, by updating the numbers. A uh, couple things that uh, we worked on since last Monday first of all as we updated the, the forecast to include another month's worth of actuals so the way that the forecast is working is every year every month we get an actuals we replace what is forecasted for that month with the actuals. so um, we now have uh, 10 months of actuals and two of forecasted whereas the initial draft of the budget had uh, only nine months of actuals and three of forecasted obviously the, the forecast becomes more accurate with the more actuals we have so uh, there wasn't a lot of change when you when you roll the numbers up to these high level categories there wasn't any significant change in how we're going to end 18 what was significant is we put in the the return of it's it's going to end up being a little over two million dollars from the sewer fund back to the general that's all up until this point that's all the money that was shipped over so that's all we can return the rest of the borrowing as we'll get into later are for the capital projects that were always part of the plan we just haven't spent the money yet they're either in design um, or the contracts are out they just haven't started billing it yet um, and keep in mind this is all on a cash basis so um, we're only moving money uh, as it either comes in or goes out the door uh, so what happened is, is if you'll recall last Monday, we were looking at an ending cash balance in the general fund of the five, in the five million ballpark. Uh, well, let's call it six, we'll round to six. Um, so when we return the money from the sewer, we were forecasting now uh, more like 8.6, 8.7 million in the general fund. Um, so that's a, a pretty significant improvement. Um, what that does is it just, it increases our starting point for 19 uh, the the deficit that we've had for 19 in terms of what was 
presented with the township manager's budget still there and it's still uh, shade under half a million um, so uh, really the, the primary difference between a week ago and now is just how we're the improvement how we're going to end 18 uh, which is good news um, what hasn't changed is there's still a big gap between where we thought the act 511 revenues uh, were going to be and where they're actually going to be um, and that's really what's driving the, the turnaround uh, in the, the outlook um, I, I was playing around with different variables so uh, forget that number for a moment <laughs> that real estate tax number uh, what we added so what this spreadsheet's doing is, is we have we have our base summary which is just how basically how things exist right now um, that's what the numbers are and then what we do in this section here in the middle is we have any modifications we want to make to that and then it just sums into uh, a modified um, or a, the ending result uh, in terms of the high level budget numbers so our modifications as they exist now um, we're aware of them they were touched on in the budget itself is we have uh, the OPEP funding plan right now it's not included uh, in the, the, the base numbers up top uh, if we were to include it as part of the normal schedule that expense is one million two fifty nine and some change um, and then our program modification section we have our capital um, the capital program this is if you read the executive summary this is the pay as you use section of it the amount here is going to be a little different than what we published back in October because projects have been added um, based on input from commissioners and uh, other meetings that have taken place uh, normally we wouldn't have added them but since this entire part of the capital program isn't funded anyway we figured we would want to show a little bit more comprehensive look at what the number is so um, that's what the 2.2.9 million is uh, we have the shade tree recommendation uh, if you'll recall that was a little over a million well it was a million flat plus the 25,000 uh, in either uh, grant matching funds or general fund transfers that they had requested uh, or recommended we have the additional funds uh, being requested by the Radnor Fire Company at 250,000 and then we had the Wayne Senior Center request of 15 to um, help fund the gap in their social worker uh, that they also applied a grant for so when you add it all up um, it would be adding 5.4 million to the general fund budget um, and then these are the number that these are this is the result is uh, are the numbers down here um, it says 2018 board in the gray column is that the 2019 yeah number? it's just pointing out that's just a cell I didn't update when I got it. built this for this year. How much is that um, case you go plan? I'm just curious. On the capital side? Yeah. Uh, right now it's sitting at two million eight sixty six five sixty. Two eight six. Uh, so let me clean this up real quick because I, I apologize I was playing around with. So we go from a half million and then obviously it makes sense if we add five and a half to that we're at roughly six million and uh, a deficit for the general fund uh, we touched on a little bit last week we we do have a cash balance policy that tells us if our act 511 revenues are greater than 30 percent of our total general fund revenue that the fund balance policy is 25 percent of expenditures um, these uh, cells down here are telling us if they're shaded red that we're under and then by how much so even at the end of 18 we look like we might fall just short of that policy um, but obviously definitely in 2019 if everything got approved which I'm not sure that's a realistic uh, outcome but if it all got approved 
then we would basically chew up all of the general fund reserves that we have. That would also then mean that for 2020, we would have to have a commensurate, I guess either we would have to tax or we would have to not spend enough and we can replenish that fund. That's how the policy is written now, yes. The board has a year to determine how they would replenish and get back in, in compliance with the policy. Or we, we did talk about last Monday changing the policy. It is, a, it is an ordinance that is up and it's subject to the board's approval, so you guys can always change it. Um, I would advocate that it's a pretty good policy, and it's certainly um, we're seeing the benefits of having it because the reason why it was written the way it was is because we understood that the Act 511 revenues are volatile and they, they can and have in the past and are doing it again now uh, change in a hurry. Um, a $2 million swing in one year is certainly not something that we would sit, would have sit, been predicting a year ago. Um, and, it, and it's pretty significant to our operations. So that's why the policy exists. We're not in it, and that's not even in a recession or anything like that. Which, right. Um, well, it depends. There's some evidence that we're still in a recession on certain parts of the economy, one of which is retail. It can get a whole lot more unpleasant. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, you know, I would say that no, I predicted this, and I said businesses are moving out, we're going to have a lower number, and I was correct. Uh, not, there's no recession. We have four percent GDP. There's no retail is in general is doing well. So I, I think it's people moving out. Well, the retail, the retail piece of our Act 511 is about a million of the the, the eight million or nine million that we're budgeting. The rest of it's business activity. It's more on the the financial sector, the legal sector. Mm -hmm. um, not so much. The Has that dropped? Steadily? Actually, the retail is doing. It is doing well. I mean, has the mercantile is doing okay. Has that dropped steadily when you look at online purchases? Mercantile? Yeah, I mean, so when you look at so online purchases, I mean, Amazon, for lack of one company, is, that's really the way retail is going. Can we expect less retail revenues as consumers become more comfortable with buying items online? I know that we did lose Bed Bath and Beyond and a couple big anchors, but the. Uh, the graph on the right, this is our mercantile tax revenue uh, in purple. And you can see that for a number of years, there was a steady decline. Um, but 18 has been a good year. Uh, and we're, right now, the estimate is, is that we'd be in the same ballpark for 19. Um, it looks like a pretty big step up. But in terms of dollars, that's not very significant. Well, what are you basing your estimate on? Are you using us? any kind of benchmark? Just curious. Uh, it's a, yeah, I'm using historical trends, um, a, a forecasting feature that's in Excel that just takes variances from prior years and. and so it's not you're not looking at, at data, at, at you know data from the government that says hey sales are going to be up this year sales are you're just well, looking. Well, we at haven't that. we have that kind of data would not be helpful to us because the only. The only sales that we receive tax on are those that are based here in Radnor. And we don't get any sales data locally. Um, the tax is paid a year in arrears, and there's no kind of there's no filing requirement over time to give us any indication on how things are going. It's a May 15th file and pay deadline. So once a year we get all of this data that tells us how everything was over a year ago. So, so there's really nothing that so it's a rear view mirror approach. Absolutely, and it, that's what makes it difficult to predict. Um, yeah, if, I can imagine. Unless we know. Yeah. I mean, if no. we know what it's going to be next year, I, I'd Chris be happy to enter that amount in. But, but internet sales would that be a sale that would be subject to tax? If. <coughs> If the company is as a base of operations here in Radnor, absolutely, um, that would be subject to the apportionment, and uh, we wouldn't get all of it, depending on warehouses, payroll, you know, uh, the three the three different factors. Well, that's up to the auditor and Kevin, you know. So, but yeah, I, all right. So you're saying that that would that would so that would flow in there. 
Yeah. To the extent that they're making internet sales and fulfilling it out of Wayne for any of these stores, that's in there. The base of operations, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, if, the headquar if they're headquartered here, uh, even if the, the goods and materials aren't housed here, we would still... Make the case. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It, and they, they would, would be subject the to otherwise. If they if they have their well, I mean, how many people have a lot of internet sales? It's probably not a big thing. Yeah, it's, no. I, the I, the biggest part of Mercantile is more the uh, food, grocery, and dining. Right, that all falls under that category. Right, and that's going to be transactional. You know, and that that's happening. Yeah. And in theory, when Villanova, when all the stores on the base level of Villanova <laughs> get going, that will help bump that back up. Penn, when that goes in, that'll help bump it back up, right? Uh, well, we have to be careful about talking about specific tax cases because it's all confidential. Sure, sure. Je um, Jenny Brown refused to say that. But these are bus these are businesses that are going to get started up, so I think the uh, logical yeah. conclusion is that when they get started, which is a ways off again. but Je Jenny, Jenny Brown did not confirm that in the hypothetical. She refused to answer that exact question. So I set it up as a hypothetical. If you were a university in Radnor and had hotel, restaurant, would it be taxable? She refused to say well, that that would be definitely taxable. Well, I mean, there's a lot of legal implications built into that well, answer. Well, I think she was being careful. When you look at that, I mean, their their dollars may stay a little bit more in Radnor, but you know, I, I don't think that it's going to shoot up. A lot. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, if you eat, if you eat at the Conley Center, three or four or some random, sorry, you know, if you eat on campus, and we're not saying it's a university, three nights a we're off campus or off campus, but I don't think your dollars are if you eat on campus or off campus, and you do it in Radnor. It's yeah, not, it, not changing anything. The other thing to keep in mind is it's it's three mills, so it's going to take a lot of gross receipts to generate yeah. well, real three meaningful three change three 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 after 25000 Yeah, there's $25,000 exemption. But So, I mean, it just, it's going to take a lot of new gross activity to move the needle significantly. All right. Um, All right. On that side. The last number that Villanova reported was they said they had 54000 they were paying. And that was several years ago, but a lot of that is property taxes from their hotel, right? From their yeah, from their from their taxable parcels. Yeah, and we can talk Penn, property taxes all and, and Penn business privilege and mercantile tax. Who knows what what that'll end up being, um, if anything? Right. So can I can I ask about the business privilege tax? So you know we're definitely off for this year. Correct. I'm looking at the numbers here. Yes. So we're definitely off. Yep. What by like 14 percent? Um. So we've seen. So based on that, but you put in for a you know growth for next year. Um. For hopeful. Right. Up from like. More I like mean, we're at like 7.5 right now, and you put in like 8.4 for next year. Um. You know, how certain are we of that? And then I also want to ask about this. Uh, this business privilege audit line, and please bear with me since my first time going through all this. Um, you know, in last year, with 2018, we had uh, 1,535 for that one, but we're putting 450 in for next year. So, yep. so two things. First of all, with where we're setting the bar for next year, um, the, this graph uh, hopefully is, is helpful to show that while while it is a large jump from where we we're going to end 18 in all likelihood. Uh, it does put us, really just puts us back on par with the, the revenue amounts as they were going back to 13. So uh, part of the reason that we feel somewhat confident in that is in 17, we have paid out a lot of refunds. Um, so the other thing with the, the way these taxes are paid is you're, you're basically, you're, when you first get here, as a business, you are required to forecast out your gross receipts and pay on that. And then after you're here through another, through May 15th of the following year, you report your actual gross receipts and reconcile to what you already paid. So if you had more gross receipts than you initially filed, you owe a little bit. If you have less, we owe you money back. 
So every year is a reconciliation of estimated to actual uh, gross receipts. Uh, this year for 18, what we're what we ended up doing is paying a lot of folks back on um, estimates that were higher from prior years. So the anticipation is is that is a, a one year thing, um, and that next year we'll get back to more normal activity. You, you ask about my confidence, and, and I've, I've said this every year, is uh, until we find uh, something that, some sort of indicator or combination of indicators that, that line up with how this activity goes, uh, it's very difficult to be confident in it at all. Because um, uh, again, you know, you could have a company say, saying, you know what, we think we're gonna do $10 million in gross receipts next year. Next year comes and they only did seven or worse and then we owe them money back. And there's, there is nothing that we have in terms of data here in this building that tells us, uh, that would give us an indicator to predict that. It just, it's May 15th comes, everyone files, and then we have uh, we have the data then. I, I pay mercantile tax where I work, so I, yeah, so I, I mean, my business, so I, I understand how it. The predictability is still something that, that we, that we fight to try to figure out and understand. So again, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about having a little, having a good cash balance policy so that we, you know, we don't have to hit a panic button when we do back up in revenue, which is where we're sitting now. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm somewhat confident, um, but again, I'm not going to sit here and say next year we're going to generate 8.7 million uh, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the the other thing you asked about was the audit. Yeah. Um, we historically we put 450 in, um, and it's more about a placeholder or a, uh, an anticipation. Some years we do better, some years we do worse. Uh, it just depends on uh, the number of audits, and then you know what the results of those are. It, it, it's as unpredictable as, as anything. Um, there are there are indicators that tell us when something might be awry, mm -hmm. um, and so we'll pinpoint companies to audit based on that. But um, there's nothing to tell us that the result of that audit will be four hundred fifty thousand. So the so if we just not realize what we could potentially realize for this year, is that why this? No, it's just right that now, the, so the audits that we performed this year didn't <coughs> return uh, financial results. Uh, basically, what they did is confirm that what companies are reporting was accurate. So, yeah. I remember we had a settlement. We had 100000 or something we gave. Was it 80000 or something? We haven't realized that yet. That's coming in in December. So that'll, that'll be a number that we'll see in December. So we, we, we approved it, though, a couple months ago. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's in a... It's a payment plan, so we'll, we'll receive the initial installment this year, and then we'll get some, they'll get the rest of it over the remaining term. But um, the alternative is, and we we arm wrestled with this a few years ago, is whether to put any number in there at all. Um, and what we ultimately landed on was putting some estimate in there because without it, it's a half a million dollars in revenue that has to be made up somewhere else, and we didn't want to set real estate tax millage based on something that we thought was reasonable that we would receive. So we didn't want to get more revenue than we thought we needed or double up on that area. So we put an estimate in, um, you know, sometimes we hit it, sometimes we exceed it by a lot. Some some years it's just not there, so. Yeah, obviously this year it's just not there. Just not there. <laughs> well, just we're not just kind of squeeze, I mean, you just kind of start to run out of people. Right, the auditor. I mean, they they, they comb through, and, and you know, they it kind of dwindles because they're doing it every year. You would think, but there's there's a couple thousand filers. So with one auditor, it's he, we could never get through all. Of them. Yeah, it's. I mean, historically, it's you know, it looks like we've averaged what around five hundred thousand every year. Yeah. But you've also lost some tenants. Brandywine, when I met with them, said they were at occupancy of about 99%. They're down to 80% now. And, and, they, they, moved their, and they moved their corporate headquarters. Is, so. is that due to raising the rent? I heard some some people were, uh, some businesses left because the rent was just skyrocketing. 
they said primarily it's due to a lot of these businesses when the lease run up, they like the shiny new penny, they want new buildings, so we lost some to King of Prussia, so that's a real, I look at threat to us is who's developing around us. Haverford, Newtown, uh, yeah. Upper Marion, Lower Marion, I mean, the, they're all having to build brand new, that's why our redevelopment is so critical of redeveloping spaces that we have. Well, you know what I heard from one of the developers, anecdotal, that at Radnor Corporate Center, tenants were leaving because they didn't have enough lunch alternatives. And that when they tried to bring in the trucks to service the people, our guy said the trucks need to pay business privilege and mercantile tax, need to pay mercantile tax. And the trucks are like, well, we're not, we're not staying for that. We're out of here. So you people are on your own. I, that, that's the type of difficulties that that, uh, that that was relayed to me. I didn't make that up. I wouldn't have come up with that on my own. I'd like to talk to those companies. <laughs> okay. I, I would too, because they get the first 25000 in sales for, you know, for free. So, so you and also they get licensed here, so they're out in the parking yeah. lots getting, yeah. getting their permits to be able to sell. Yeah. The issue that come up from brand new lines and the them. word around the street developers, we are very difficult to deal with to get through the process. That is the problem. Who are, is? Are the township? Right, the township getting people through development is a, is a problem. I just disagree. It's ridiculous. We haven't been anything but easy to get through. Everybody right. gets through whatever they want. We I mean, can probably argue me. about that all night. I'll, you know, we can the, probably argue that, that all I night. I think that's a topic for next year of how we need to refocus on economic development, redevelopment of these projects, and how we can get people through the process. I, I mean, I look at it like this. You lost Bed Bath & Beyond. You lost Kmart. And those are two. Kmart. I, I know. I know. I'm, 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 please let me finish. I know it's not us, but you lost two big anchor stores in three miles, four miles of Lancaster Avenue. So it gives consumers an incentive to go to King of Prussia. And I think that you've seen um, with the new Target there and with um, the whole town, town center that you'll see an exodus of retail sooner than later going. I mean, the only real store we have up and down is that TJ Maxx and Microsoft and Target? No, the tar the tar Target uh, is a different Target. Will open, but I'm looking at last year. Target wasn't open. Came off was closed. So can, there's very little. There's, to, there's very little stretch to do, you know, one-stop shopping. Hopefully that Target will help. Obviously, I know that's not in our t our township or even our county, but hopefully people can start going back and forth on Lancaster Avenue. And I guess you could look to see if that is one of the causes is if you look to see what the traffic is. If traffic has died uh, generally, and I don't know if you can count cars, but looking at the cars. Like it. Well, Does, doesn't it seem, doesn't seem like it died. Seems like it. You know what? Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll drop it. So no, I but but yeah, 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 top of Bed Bath sure. and Beyond is right. Bed Bath and Beyond that's legitimate. And Upper and Mary, and they, they do on, have they do have on. that Target and Wegmans. Everybody goes over to that Target and Wegmans. Yeah, and I mean, they may have killed the Kmart, but I mean, I, I know that my wife and I, I don't love going to Kmart. Please, Kmart died years please ago. get back to the budget. All right, so All right. I think that this is yeah. definitely a broader conversation, I believe, Bob, year, that, and this <laughs> is, I think, you know, a goal for next yes. year. I think, you know, looking at, comp uh, you know, the old comprehensive plan, we need to we need to like do, we need to start talking about what Radnor needs to do to be competitive. Um, looking at what's happening, I know we've been heard the, heard the WBA beating that drum. So, you know, we, we definitely do need to do that, but we need to focus on this right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, well, we I'll, I'll leave you with this. Uh, just, just again, the, the, the retail piece of the, the tech, the revenue is, is actually doing okay. Um, and I, it, at a million dollars of gross receipts, the township gets 2925 So um, it... Not real elastic. Yeah, well, it, it just, it, the bigger fish, you know, the, the, the financial companies, the, the legal firms, the, the ones that have you know, high gross receipts are the ones that are going to generate 
the tax revenue. So I, losing, certainly having big box stores that are sitting empty is not helpful um, in terms of the tax base. Uh, bang for our buck is, is somewhere else told. in, in the bigger buildings. But, you know, we have the pet stores empty as well, and you know Avenue Eats, and uh, so there's up and down that 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 area in in the WBA, uh, the Wayne Business Overlay District. So I mean that's where we you know fill that place up instead of le leaving that well, it, vacant. But there's a problem there. We have actually had businesses We're in off here. We've budget met with again. <laughs> but at twenty five thousand dollars a month in rent for that pet store, that's people are that they're not paying twenty five thousand a month. That's a lot of dogs. That that's 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 <laughs> what most places <laughs> to try to look at that. You've got landlords that come in with twenty five grand. Who's going in there for twenty five grand? Limited part of that. Again, this is a larger conversation. It is. It is. And I think it's we need bigger, to engage. We also Absolutely. need to engage the community in this because you guys can talk about box stores and all that kind of stuff. But it we, we need to, to the budget. That uh -huh. is a budget issue. But uh -huh. not if we don't have it. So we need to deal with yeah, what we, we have. We, we do need to press on. Yeah, yeah we yeah, need the to deal with what we have and you know what we need to what we're facing right now. Um, and then we need to be more proactive in a, a future plan. So how we the, the next thing, um, just from a high level to touch on or to step through is our, our capital funding. Um, and for those of you who've been on the board through a couple cycles now, I apologize, you're, you're hearing this again. Uh, and CARFAC had submitted uh, some recommendations, or not recommendations, but um, some thoughts, uh, some different um, uh, alternatives. alternatives. Yeah, that's right. I think that's the word they used. Um, on funding the capital plan. So that's actually where we got into this whole pay as you use, pay as you go bucket is um, we have been able uh, through the revenue growth to satisfy the pay as you go portion of our capital plan. That is in the, the, the base number. So that will keep the fleet, um, <laughs> the, the, the fleet replacements on schedule and allow us to continue to replace the, uh, the garbage trucks and the police cars. <coughs> And the, the dump trucks that we use. Um, the other piece, the larger piece, the infrastructure, uh, that's what we're still looking for funding on. Uh, being that it's November 19th and we're one week away from introducing the ordinance on the 2019 budget, it doesn't seem realistic that we're going to hammer out an entire capital funding plan tonight and next Monday. Um, what, what may be a better approach is that this is one thing that we dedicate some time to in the early parts of next year. Um, and then that way, we not only are we developing a plan, but we're also identifying the projects and getting some buy-in and approval on the projects themselves. Because one of the things, and, and I'm, I'm going off script a little bit, and I may speak out of turn, it's it, very frustrating from my perspective to try to plan is when capital projects are being lobbed in from every direction at all times. So it's impossible to really have a good comprehensive understanding of what our capital program should look like when on Monday it looks like one and a half million and on Tuesday, you know, we just added, you know, four new sidewalks, a couple signals and oh by the way, you know, a bridge just went out and now it's now it's two and a half million. So um, and all of that without any kind of real funding plan to address it. So uh, we don't have any wiggle room. We don't have any ability to have one of those projects pop up on us and say, you know what, if, if the board said you, if we'd like that, we want to do it, let's go. We're not even in a position to be able to react. Uh, so it would be nice to, to talk about and come up with some policy decisions on how capital projects are identified. Uh, what steps are necessary for them to get incorporated into the plan. And then over time, like on a more regular basis, we talk, we talk about it, uh, not just at the end of November. Um, that way, when we get to this point in the year, we're, we're talking about little variations. We're not talking about, oh my God, we need to come up with 2.8 million in a month. And is that is that kind of scenario? Is that the recommendation? Is that what Carfac put together for you, or? Well, during one of those discussions, we can, we can blow the dust off of that those alternatives and talk in much more detail. But it was it was a pay with cash, borrow, um, 
hybrid. Uh, where we're borrowing a little bit in just so real quick, we borrow a little bit and as we pay that down, every four to five years as we pay that down, we refill the bucket and then pay that down, refill it. So that there's a constant stream of revenue, but you're not necessarily increasing the township's debt exposure. Um, but what you are buying into is a constant level of debt. It's not something that would ever go away, um, which uh, we haven't been cognizant of because we ever do have a big project that we need to borrow for that's going to build on top of that. So uh, it, that was one piece of it. And then using, um, you know, carving out some of our operating budget uh, or a dedicated millage to fund the rest was the other part of the discussion. So the, the borrowing was to help offset the amount of millage that would otherwise be necessary. But, but Bill, everything is pay as you go. For the roads, we have the fuels tax. Roads are for, a little for sanitary for for st st storm sewer. We have uh, this, this the rain tax. For uh, sanitary sewer, we had to borrow. We borrow. We have notes that we borrow. Um, well, that's new. <laughs> right, a week so, ago, we didn't have that. So we have that. We have that. So what's in the two point? I mean, what's so keep in mind. So here um, we have Matson Ford Bridge. Uh, we have sidewalks on North Wayne. The the annual road program, I'll grant you, is something that the board over the years has done a good job in setting up. That is basically established. It, yeah, that's we're basically in pretty good shape. And there. we didn't. We're not going to spend the money this year, right? Well. We're not going to spend it this year, but the program, what we'll end up doing is spending this year's money next year. So we're going to spend it just... But then we'll have next year's money as well. Or we'll, next well, year, theoretically, we'll do two programs. We'll, we'll, we'll do two for next year. Yeah. Um, could we get something out or something for me to send to the people who are like waiting for the, like with some explanation about our guy falling down or, you know, what, what can we tell the public about why we didn't pay? Sure. I should. I want to get them something because they were expecting it. But in any event, we're gonna we're gonna save up that money. And the signals aren't they all paid for by projects? Paid for by us. I think he's. I think he's referring to. You're talking about Villanova. <laughs> yeah, we might get a signal here and there thrown into one of those projects. But by and large, Conestoga 320 or. That's us. Oh, yeah, so we're going to start at 320 North Wayne. Yeah. Now, well, let's take out take out that Pine Tree Eagle Road one right there. You th let's strike that project. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to give that one up. <laughs> Hartford, Tra Hartford Trail is paid for by bonds. No, it's only half paid for. Bonds. Por partially. That, partially, I've got that noted. Part, this is the part that's not funded by bonds, uh, the 199. But we have other aspects we have facilities that we, require work we don't know what that's going to be anyway it might not even be 199 uh, public works um, Radnor fire company for you guys that's the plunger that's the signal plunger for the yeah. exiting the station yeah. uh, this building we have the Sapizio gym uh, that is a dying roof other infrastructure um, annual bridge repairs again another sidewalk or sidewalk projects that are out there um, our parking lots, um, and then our park system. Um, you know, we're fortunate enough to have fantastic parks, but they they need reinvestment. Um, and these are the ones that were not included in the borrowing we did in '15. Um, so there's always money needed for that that piece of the capital program too. Uh, so that's how we get to 2.866. Uh, and the number swells a little bit next year, but I, I don't want to get, I, I think we'll get too far in the weeds if we start identifying individual projects and try to hammer that so, all so out. So that, that 2866 that's not included yet, is that kind of like? None of that is included in the budget. Those are just projects that have been identified. Um, some of them have been approved uh, that we're going to have to come up with funding one way or another. Okay. Um, so on top of the, the pension issues for 1.3, and then I know Shade Tree, okay. did you put that in the budget or not? Shade Tree is, but the fire companies asked yeah. for 250 and the Wayne Business Association asked for 390 is not. Am I correct? Wayne Business asked for two, 
two point six. No, million. they asked for three ninety this year, and then three million the year after. Yeah, the three ninety to design and engineer the improvements that in, so, in a future year we would spend the, the larger amount to do the improvements. Well, Bill, don't don't we have to decide what we want to do about the um, the reserve percentage first? Because it seems like we're right on the border there, right? So if, if we don't want to change that policy. I'm not sure how we're spending this money. Well, the policy year, allows us lag. to go into it. It's just that we have to identify how we're going to come out of it. Yeah, I know. That in 2020. Yeah. 20. So we have to. So we have to decide if we're comfortable with dropping below that this year. I, I don't. We need a super majority to do that. I can't remember. Ooh, do you remember? I, um, I have to go into the policy. And yeah, we, I, I don't need recall to check that. that. So I think that's we the first question, problem, right? That was written in 2013. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so whether well, we're able to, but whether we have the appetite yeah, yeah. to do that. Yeah, because yeah. if we don't, then and this I is, we're, we're, we're kind of wasting time here, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Which, yeah, I guess it's chicken yeah. or egg. Uh, do you want to figure out what you want to fund first and then talk about how you want to fund it? What? Well, Why is shade tree on there? Because we included everything that was presented. Well, and at some point, and again, we can defer that for a year, but we've deferred it for 25 years for tree maintenance. So that's coming at you. And that, that that's for new trees. Everyone. That's for new trees. We've got to spend money cutting back trees. Well, this is all pr part of it. Yeah, Removal, part of planning. It. This was both. It's everything. It's yeah, the significant amount in 2019 was mostly to remove hazardous trees. That, that million that they were asking for. I remember Shane's tree. I said, how is it 650 a tree that you wanted in that budget for 1,000 trees or something? So I, th I thought there was a big portion of it with nutrients. <coughs> Bill, did, have you heard back from the Women's Shelter and the League of Women Voters? Have they given you an ask or not? No, no, no. So we're yeah. just going to Where's WBA up there? Um, they would actually be in the capital plan. Okay. So, I mean, they're, they're going to be baked into that $2.8 million. Okay. You just didn't break them out. Not on here. So the, so the 390 is in that 2.866? It should yes, be. Yes, sir. Because I didn't see it. So there's another. Th okay. Oh, well, your eyes are going to go across here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This thing is so tiny. Mm -hmm. We'll work on getting a bigger TV. <laughs> Put it in the capital budget. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, without going through all these lines, I don't know if it's in there or not. Right. Control that. <laughs> um, all right. It may not be in there. WBA didn't come up. Yeah. Uh, that, I certainly wouldn't spell it out. Shade tree. The shade tree won't be. So the 2.8 might be more like 3.1, if, uh, if that's not in there. If you put the 390 the in. <laughs> this is how capital, yep. this is how it how goes. it's been for the last eight years. Yeah, I mean, projects are added every day. <clears throat> okay, so do we need to address I guess the question of um, going into those into the well, I think funds. we need to identify which projects we're interested in funding and which of the organizations that have made requests are we interested in funding. I'd like to give money to all of them. I just don't think that we have it right now. Based on this, we don't have any money extra for yeah. any any of those requests. <laughs> Well, so I, I mean, what does it look like if we just fund at the at 2018 levels? I mean, as much as they say that. Uh, I think the delta there think, yeah, was roughly was 50 thousand. Yeah, you said 49 four. Yeah, and that didn't include the fire company. That was <coughs> just library. Or there, yeah, it didn't include the 15. For the yeah, it doesn't include the 15 for the. For the senior. Well, center. I don't know. The senior, senior center's center. on here, 185. Because. Before they asked for the 15, we had built in a, like a 3% increase oh. over yeah, what 
and you we went did. over the, that last meeting. Basically, it was about the same. There was a couple of bumps for most of them. Yeah, the library is the, the biggest bump uh, because we it's the biggest amount that we think we hand out. Well, we haven't given a hell of a lot of money recently. Oh, come on. I'm <laughs> Just for the record, the checks are made out to Renner. Uh, <laughs> 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 Not to Helen. Not to one, of the, one of the things, things I guess I will say, to be the bad guy about it, is you think of we give to all the organizations somewhere around one, two, one, three a year. One, yeah, one, two is closer. So we give out, on. and we give to organizations that they do impact the township somehow, but they're not within our operation. But they don't, I'm not sure if they're dipping into their cash reserves like we are, is, and if that's a policy that goes beyond this board year time back whenever <coughs> that was established, however long ago to fund these groups, but it's just tough when you're looking at trying to dip into your reserves and we're making everybody else whole while we go into the reserve, what's that impact that we have? And that's something that I think is a policy of the board, you know, we're taking care of everybody else so that they're fine. We have to well, like I said, the most of that is the is the library, which is about a million. So I mean, you're not suggesting that we would not fund the library. I'll get the ADD uh, first though before. <laughs> 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 well, 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 hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You win. But, but we are. I mean, that that's uh, the budget that we are presenting <coughs> does show a deficit. We are dipping into some reserve money for that. So the, the the problem that I see going into the reserves is I think it sets a terrible precedent you can only do that so much and your intention will be yeah we'll catch up next year but looking at what the shortfall is this year I think and going forward it's just going to keep amassing and amassing and amassing. I get that it's a quick fix. I think it's a quick, quick fix with longer detrimental implications. And we'd have to double the real estate tax in order to dig out of that hole for the next year. Or like not have a police department or something. Uh, well, the, the math is about a forty-seven percent tax increase to fix that. No. To cover the oh, we can do it. That's just algebra. That's not a policy. <laughs> well, I, Bob, I right. I made the point. Well. With the limitation on deductibility of state and local taxes for 2018, you know, I, I, a lot of people are going to blow it up just with their school tax. Be done. So I, I look at all this tax as not deductible. So to the extent it's going to 501c3s, I'd rather give them my tax money directly. So hear that, Helen? <laughs> so we can't, you cannot pull the rug out from under these groups in one fell swoop and that's why I was suggesting maybe we just hold the hold the line on that fund them at the 2018 levels um, and we'll see where we fall on next year I, I'm, I'm not interested in dipping into the reserves I, you know given you know I know Bill's trying to be optimistic but with the business sure. privilege tax and all of that you know that's fair. I, I'm fearful to count on that you know and and, and not and assume that we're going to go up when we could stay level or go down again. Um, if, if we stay, sorry, this is a resource fee. No. I don't want to cut you off. No, no, if, if we still stay at the last year's level, it's only a $50,000 difference, less the fire. I mean, that's relatively nothing. That's what 1% of what our shortfall is. I, I don't think that. Business privilege is not what's causing the issue. No, no, it's not business privilege. I'm just saying that even if we keep, you know, these are the, these are. Well, it's a start. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know that it's a start, it's but a it's start. still <laughs> one percent. I mean, these programs, I believe, help make Radnor so great. But I don't. I think that it's not even addressing any of the issue. You're still, you're still in the same place where you were. I think that's why we propose that we would hold this dip in the reserves while the board next year worked on this and said, look, what are our priorities out of this whole list? And then I know Bill has said this over again, is how you spread this out. We're not going to take all one big giant hit at one time with these. 
um, just like in the sanitary sewer fund. I mean, there's some expenses we're looking down the road, but it's all not going to happen like today, so we got to address today. It's how the board sets the priorities. If this is really where we're at, and that's just time, taking the time to go through, picking projects. And so, so last year, what year close the books for 18? When will everything be done? December 31. No, when will you know, for example? Oh, you know, oh okay, on a cash, cash basis, uh, third week in January. Okay. So, end of January is when we should take another review of all this. And for example, previous discussions you and I have had suggest that the fund balance might be a little healthier. It might be. Might be. If it is, then we can look at some of these requests again in first quarter. And that's when we really, I mean, the goal for next year has got to be finally getting around to this capital program. Yeah, they absolutely have to be interested. Well, and the sanitary service, another big one. Um, the, going back, I'm sorry, but going back to the deadline that we're on with our ordinance is to, we only get one chance to set millage rates for the year. Um, so anything that's not going to be tied to our millage, we can carry the discussion on yeah. and, and resolve it at some other point. Um, we have to send our millage rate for 2019 down to the county by mid-December. So um, that's the one number that once that ordinance is passed, we it will be another year before we have a chance to to address it. And the same goes with the sanitary sewer rent and um, stormwater fee, although that's not been that's not really up for change. My, my sense is that we don't want to touch the millage. That's my sense. No, that's I, that's right. That's right. I think, yeah. I mean, I I think so that's the majority right. opinion is we're not we're not going to touch no, the millage. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think I think Carl looks right about that. Well, that's the direction that yeah. would be good. <laughs> that's what you're looking for. Right? You're looking <laughs> So again, that's my sense. Yeah, Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, please tell me. Definitely. So, wrong that, right? so you had said that 47 percent increase in millage. Did I? 47 percent? Yeah. Yeah. So what I think of my local taxes, I think I'm paying like a five thousand, six thousand dollar bill, but that's not really what we're talking about. That's principally the school district tax. Yes. Overwhelming. Yes, yeah, 70, 75 percent of school districts. So a 47 percent increase above what the average rather household, not individual, but household would be paying on their millage. We're talking like 250, 270 bucks, right? No. Uh, I it, it'll, it'll be more uh, more like five, yeah. 500 for that kind of increase. So you have on your spreadsheet 588 is the average that we're paying? Yeah, sounds about right. Two hundred and forty so thousand dollars assessment. So forty seven percent off of five hundred and eighty eight is two hundred and seventy six dollars. I'm not saying total it would be two hundred and seventy six dollars. I'm saying the increase would be two hundred and seventy six dollars. On the average assessed value, which is that's just an average. Correct. And you're talking about a 47 percent tax increase. I don't think increase? anyone's talking about a 47. No, but that's what he wants to do. You want to do a 47 percent tax increase? You're looking at what you're looking at. You're looking at it. You're looking at it. What Jack said. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out what two numbers add up to when you well, what two numbers multiply to. <laughs> and if it's 276 dollars, I agree that's the average. Some people will pay more, and some people will pay less. I don't know that a 50 percent tax increase because it's not going to be 47. percent Fifty percent. We're going to round up. I, I don't know that that's going to be palatable. But right now, we're not talking about. You're not running again, are you? <laughs> do you? I'll, I'll tell you what. Why don't we do this? Instead of having police, let's just sub this out to the state police. We can save a lot of money. Identify for me what it is you want to cut. Do you not want to have a fire company? No, we're talking about what we're going to cut. We have the manager's recommended budget, which is to not do any projects and to not do the OPEP, and then we're good. No, we're not good. Well, we're the not not with the, commi not with not the commitment, commitment still <laughs> you're going to meet as a board and staff to meet to say, how are we going to address long-term all these issues and set priorities? Then you can put a plan together of how you're going to fund these moving outward. 
you know, so that you don't. Well, again, these are kind of the luxuries. We, we, the stuff that's the basic stuff Water we have needs. covered. We have sewers covered. We borrowed the money for that. No, we, we have stormwater covered. We don't have, we don't have sewers, we do have covered, sewers covered. We covered. And, 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 until there's not. an emergency break. Yeah. yeah but we, there we has have to been replace the last three our years. sewers because they're hundred year old vitrified clay pipes that are leaching into the ground. There's raw sewage coming up in the middle of the No, it's actually the water's getting into the pipes, but it doesn't matter. It's either we way. We can, into the it took the we have got it covered for next year and the year after, probably. No, we borrowed we four and a half million. No. We That's don't know. We've been saying. No, they have not done an assessment. Last year. We've been saying that for two months. We don't. They have done assessment. That's not an issue for this budget. This budget, most of our, our projects are covered. The big issue, if someone wants to criticize the board, is why are you not funding that OPEB, that one point two million, oh. to and get back in the and, and that that's a legitimate thing. And then the other issue is. Who cares if you have four point five billion dollars, eight point five million, or eight point three million in the general fund as a buffer? Nobody cares. I care if you have two million in the in the. In the well, we won't have two million because we're going to keep it at eight eight something. Well, then you need to raise taxes. No, you don't. You don't need to raise taxes. You need to do no new no new projects. That's what he said. So which yeah, projects do you not want to do? That's not what he said. That's not how the numbers add up. It is a number. That's not realistic. Because not doing new projects means that the existing bridges, roads, sewers, and storm sewers. No, the roads are paid for by the but the, the paving liquid is paid fuels. for by liquid fuels. Can you put that? Can you go back to the spreadsheet? Can we yeah. go through this real quick? I think this goes back to well, the question that shows. Well, can I just ask one question? Yeah. So last so year, uh, previous board funded the Willows at one point seven. Right. One point eight. Yeah. One point eight. Well, 1.7, 100,000 has been used. Okay. Um, that's right. They're not using it this year. Clawed back? Do we think they're using it next year? I mean, is that something that we could use, and then when they're ready, if they're ready in 2020, then we'll put the money back in for that project? I think they're going to come in front of you in December. It's probably the good question, because my guess would be they're getting plans done now, so then to go to plans and construction, I doubt that next year they're going to be using the full amount of money. So instead of dump um, rating some of the some of the savings, if we head that out there to leverage off of mm -hmm. and pay back if they need 2020 if that's the year. Um, that's a way to keep that number higher. I thought they will. Because <laughs> <laughs> they <don't. laughs> they've been planning based on having that that money. Yeah. Well, you know, and who's to say if years. we take it and use it yeah, this year that we're going to be able to find it next year? I was just going to say, so yeah, I mean, the problem is if you run into an emergency situation, you know, whatever, nothing. Thank you. I thought another problem. But when you guys identified that money for the Willows, it came from specific funds and had to be used for the parks, correct? Or well, or for some of it. Um, there was uh, money coming from the park impact fee. Mm -hmm. That's that can only be used for park related. Uh, I, I forget the exact amounts. The larger pieces yeah, of the funding came from the general fund, which can be used for anything. Um, and the other uh, was from the the eight million dollar tax settlement fund, which is basically an extension of the general fund, so that money can be used for anything that the board identifies. So uh, for those two pieces, yeah, we could we could use those for. But that's all shown in the Willows fund on the books. Mm -hmm. Well, if the if the board says so, we can. No, I'm just saying right now. Uh, we'll yeah. find that money. It's segregated. Well, it's being transferred into the Willows fund, but if the board says, you know, pause, it can go back to its uh, today's where it was. Yeah. I think that if you do that, it sets once again a terrible precedent for anyone that comes here. Because if it's a Willows today, it could be the library tomorrow. And to even put that on the table, unless it's being totally mismanaged, to dangle money like that and projects over the the head of committees and and you know boards that we deal with, you could potentially see mass exodus of these people that are putting their time because. No one's going to sign up to do this. Stuff. Let me follow up on that. Didn't we ask for an accounting? Because you said unless it's being mismanaged. Didn't we ask for an accounting? For yeah, I, did. I received it last night. Okay, uh, I haven't had a chance to go through and, it. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting taking the money away from them. I'm saying if we need to, so we don't spend down the reserves, and they're not using it next year. Pull from that, repay it in 2020 when they're ready to use it. 
Well, the other part of that, I think, Jake, to your point, is construction can't take place until they've raised the balance of the money, which is a, probably going to be a sizable number. So I'm guessing we won't even go out to bid until there's funds secured to say we can build this. It's not going to happen next year unless someone writes a giant check. How much more do they need? Just don't you'll find out when. Yeah, we don't, 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 don't know that. We don't know the answer to that. Right. So it's just like the trust fund for the um, Social Security. We just use it now until we till it comes due later. So I, that's a, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, but if we don't have the money yeah. now, <laughs> we have to take it from there now. Fiscally irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say we're going to have it? Later, and yeah, speaking for the younger people in the room, we don't think that we're going to be getting Social Security when we're your all's age. Sorry, <laughs> 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 what age is that? Wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there, I'm thinking 65, well. 70, maybe. <laughs> I'm 54. Well, next year, next year, we get a reduced, next year, we get a reduced, 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 we get a so the money the that's, that we're talking about for the Willows, is that currently a line item that we could save by taking it away from the Willows for next year, or is that just in the general fund and that's part of the buffer that we were talking about invading anyway? Um, that's, I mean, it's money you can save. It, it, it could, instead of sitting in the Willows fund for years, or however long it takes for that project to get uh, fully funded and completed, uh, it could be in the general fund. Bad, so bad practice. But it's reserved, though, so you can't really include it. It's it's allocated. So would GASB allow you to keep it in the in, and count it? Well, capital doesn't, right? Capital swings here. Um, I, I would argue that the auditors that we know that's allocated. You got to pull that out of the calculation. As long as there's a uh, legislation on the books that says that it's being used for a specific purpose, yeah. It, it will it'll be a restricted fund balance. Restricted fund balance, right. So. And our reserves are unassigned. The only way that would really work is if the board said, look, we're gonna we're just gonna the money that we allocated a year ago, we're gonna pull back and we're gonna reevaluate it and fund it with something else down the road um, when we have a better idea of what that project's gonna cost. You know, you know, before we continue this, can you look at whatever they sent you and then go from there? Because I think that you're putting the cards the cart before the horse and it's like you're basically saying the program is not doing what it's done you're to talk about defunding it i, I, I think is premature yeah, yeah if i, I understand i don't think we're defunding no. yeah. uh, we're still remaining the commitment is there that's not what you want to eventually defund yeah it's not it's not at all i mean yeah what just Absolutely. what i heard was the how the I money that we're giving them now is being but used is mutually exclusive from the decision to pull or pause the funding and keep it in the general. If you want to talk about it in, Cash you know, in, 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 a, in a in a grander scheme, that's fine. But to talk about one entity that you want to basically correct defunding wasn't the correct word, but withhold money from. Again, I I don't think that it's going to bode well with that board and. Again, when you talk about boards in general, when we want volunteers, we need volunteers. Again, it sets a bad precedent of offering them money and say, "Hey, we're just going to take it out because we need it." Because no one, uh, no one's going to know if their their board or organization is going to be next. I don't think it'll work either because it'll be a restricted fund balance that won't count towards our reserve requirement. Well, it's all in how. The language of if the, if the decisions made to pull the money back, it's all going to be in the, the language. We would have to defund them with a nod and a wink that when you come back, we'll give you what you want, yeah. which realistically is a pretty big vote of no confidence. Like which we may defunding. not have. Which we yeah, I mean we might not have. Yes, you're, you're you're essentially saying that. I mean yeah, it's a nod and a wink, but that's basically plus it opens yeah. the door for them to come back and ask for a lot. That's true. So we'll since we're back to the drawing board, we need five million instead of one point eight. I made those numbers up. By the way. No <laughs> yeah, I mean they're developing a fundraising you know plan. Wait, you saw the that you saw Yeah, that's, see, that, that's exactly why I qualified. Now. I know how those things kind of get legs and run on the run. <laughs> and plus the million they got from the donor, I think that was contingent on getting money also from the township. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that could completely destabilize the whole project. And, and again, to be clear, I'm, I'm just throwing out an option. Yeah. As yeah. Everyone talks about not wanting to go into the reserve fund. Um, we know they're not using it this year. We know it's a strong likelihood that they're not using it next year, mm -hmm. and we'll know more in December. So that money sits there if that's if the discussion continues to be we don't want to go into the fund, but we want to fund other projects. It's money out there. Um, I'm not saying get rid of the pro get rid of the project because I still support the little project. If we wanted to not invade the reserve fund and fund OPEP, what are our options to do those two things? Uh, well, we'd have to either generate new revenue from somewhere um, or reduce spending somewhere else. How much for a combination of those two. How much revenue will we have to generate and what realistically can we cut? Um, I'll address the The revenue is 1.2 million period, is, is the amount needed to fund that program. Oh, and this afternoon, Bill, I want to step through it so that you got the chart. I mean, we're funding that until 2054. So that means it'll be 2055. That might be bumping it back here. So I mean, well, that's the issue that, but that presupposes. Yeah, we might not, we might not even be alive then, Bob. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope so. We can just kick it down That presupposes <laughs> that this is the it's only horrible. time that we do that. And that next year we solve the budget problems that prevented us from paying for it this year. Which I don't love the plan. We're going to make this a problem for next year. That's why we have the sewer system that we have. That's why we have the stormwater problem that we have. That's why we don't have the capital. Yeah, we can. But listen, we don't have a sewer assessment. They're, they're doing that. They're going to tell us what the number is. We have four and a half million to address the sewer issues from last year and what we have in the pipeline right now that we know about. So I think we should take that off the table. We didn't vote on the sewer assessment, did we? Well, we'll, no. we'll get into yeah. that. We'll get into those numbers. We haven't looked at that yet. But Rich, all you're saying is we're going to fix that problem now. And I'm glad you're right. Yes, we are. But we've been delaying for a really long time, which is why we got a plea from. We don't uh, have. But, but if yeah. we, we don't do an assessment, million, so million, we had to pay back the general fund. But only two million is in the general fund, and two and a half is going to be sitting in the sewer fund for these uh, upcoming projects that they have in the pipeline. Then, after they get done the assessment, they come back and they say, "We need 15 million dollars for the sewers. We can borrow the money for 15 million or 10 million or whatever the number is that you all agree on." I'm not going to agree on that high number, but whatever the number is, that's when we address it. So, the sanitary sewer is going to be taken care of. The roads are taken care of. Really, it's OPEB and these projects that you want. If you want to have those projects, then you ought to spend down the, the fund balance. You don't need it. That's, no, that's we really, million. really need it. I think we, we really need, need it. it. What, what do you need? You need it right now. If you want to do those projects, that's what you need it for. If we can, maybe just back to Jack's question. You had asked what can be cut. Is that something the board's asking to say, look, do you want us to come back and say this is what we would have to cut? To yeah. come up with that 1.2. It just in order of magnitude, 1.2 million is. I mean, that's a that's ten percent. That's solid. That's our whole solid waste division. That's our yeah. park maintenance division. I mean, it's not like a person here or there. That's that's an entire crew, and a, I mean, that's significant. The, num the, the numbers I always use, round figures, it's 200,000 per year for police and 150 for public works. Those are the kind of rough numbers. Headcount. Wise. Head, yeah, headcount wise. So if you want to if you want to get a million dollars, that's five police. Yeah, but we can't. Laying off policemen is a, an enormous process. We can't just say thanks for downsizing. Well, there's impacts to that. But if you want well, to, you've, and you, but you've already you, you're you're lean on the public works side, aren't you? We're, this we're, whole budget the whole, is lean. The whole, yeah, the whole thing. Staffing not, I mean, length. but, but, if, you, but if, if you want us to, we can actually put together and say, this is what this looks like. Why do you deal with facts instead of just well? I do, and there, and yeah, I, I doubt we're going to be able to cut much. I just, we, I don't think this year, based on the numbers I'm seeing, we're in a position to really do all that much in terms of this extra funding. I mean, that's just my feeling. Yeah, to be clear, yeah, I'd love I, to give everybody money, but I think we have to be sensible about this. I agree. The reason I would make that ask of you guys is not because I'm thinking to myself that what we need to do is like outsource public works. I think it's a terrible idea, but I would like to be able to put some context to my residents. 
if we have to raise the millage, if we have to ask you for the additional contribution, here's what you're getting for it. And so you get to keep getting the township trash collection. You get to keep having police instead of bringing the PSP or you know whatever, which I know is an exercise in marketing for you guys a little bit, and I'm sorry for it, but I think that it would make a real difference in getting some of these programs funded. It speaks in facts, then. It's not just guesswork of where we are. It's factual. Well, so the whole job of the township is to provide police and to provide trash. So, I mean, it's not like they get to keep it. That's what we're here to do. They're right? Right? So, so we, it's Party the other time. stuff. No, it's not. You can we, we, we need to do fire. We need to do police. We need to do trash. We need to do sewers. The rest of the stuff is extra. There's a whole lot of fluff on there. All There's a lot of extra stuff. And it's all in those projects that you have right there. So if we want to do them, you should spend the fund balance. But you can't. If you want to cut, if you want to reduce the size of the police force, you know, or the public works, you know, you have the numbers. It's going to be, you know, that's roughly what it is. It's a lot of people. So it, the other question you asked is how much in terms of revenue. So if, if we were to fund the OPEP funding, the just the 1.2 million. That's that's what's up on the screen now. So if we needed to generate 1.2 in real estate, uh, it would be a, a 0 0.3718 mills increase, which is nine and a half percent over where we're at today. Um, and then how that factors sit back to the average in the median taxpayer uh, is about 120 for the average, 100 for the median. Um, one thing we do need to reconcile, Jack, is, I, I, is the, the average that we, we touched on it a little bit ago and then we, we scattered again, but I, I do want to circle back on that. These these point right back to the, the assessment numbers from the county. Um, so th on the revenue side, if it was pure millage, mm -hmm. this is what it would look like. So it's $8 a month, I mean, a month to, to, For help, the fund, to help fund some of this stuff, that would be a tax increase of Well, that's only like funding OPEP, right? Okay. Well, it's $1.2 million. And which would fund, which would replace OPEP. Do you have a chance to look at the curves that were developed years ago by Carfax? Which curves? Ten percent increase. The one that showed when we actually achieved the arc by the spending plan, where we increased by two hundred each year. Talk to your wife about the school. Yeah, I. We have some changes that. It's all going to be a year. It might not be valid any longer. Actually, it might be worse. Uh, no, I was looking at them. Oh, yeah. um, we're, we're still in the same. The impact to the, the curves by not funding it for a year is. Just a one year offset. Yeah, I mean, it's even hard to see on here because there's so many years, but there's a blip here where the curve flattens out and then immediately starts ramping back out. And all that does is push back this intersection uh, by two years. Why, why don't we have a vote on whether we want to fund OPEB or not? That's one thing we can vote on. Well, fine. I'll I, 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 well, I move, I move that we vote on whether to, <coughs> to agree with Bob Z and to not fund that $1.24 million OPEB, or if this board chooses to override Bob Z's recommendation and to fund the uh, OPEB um, arrears, arrears. So what? So what makes us confident that if if we don't fund OPEB this year, that we're going to have the money to fund it next year. And just to be clear, this is the overage. This is the extra, right? So this is over and above what we're mandated to pay. No. No, this is the... Yeah, no, yeah, no it's... I so thought that was the extra. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is something different. It's not pension. It's there's, not MMO. There's yeah. three pieces to the OPEB funding plan. Mm -hmm. There, The first piece is funding the pay-as-you-go portion mm -hmm. or the health care for the retirees that that we bought. So we are buying health care for retirees. We have to fund that. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. The other part of the plan was uh, the township made a commitment that for any new hires that are eligible for post-retirement health benefits, that they would be pre-funded. Um, and those are only our new officers, and it um, it is a much, it, it's just the officer themselves, not spouses, kids, or anything like that. So. Um, at a much <coughs> reduced benefit versus what used to exist, we are pre-funding that for all of our new officers. 
The third piece is the one that we're talking about suspending. Um, that is the over and above. It's the catch up. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the catch up. Right. Um, and it's just, it's a part of it because right. we're ramping up to get to that full sure. annual required right. contribution. Right, right. Um, but and that's it's the, the piece catch that we're talking because about. Because we weren't paying it before. Right. For decades. For, For decades. decades. Right, right. For decades. So we should revert back to so not just kick it, just kick it, just kick so it we down should the just road. Well, well, can I get a second on that motion? Do, I mean, let's vote on that. I don't know how we can parcel this up into pieces. We, we, well, I'm just well, I'm parceling it up to that one piece that Bob's recommendation is we not fund that third tranche that Bill talked about, which is a catch up piece on other post employment benefits. It was 1.24 million. Do we agree with Bob or do we not agree? That's the motion and needs a second. I understand well, that. I don't want to vote on that. That isn't right a now. motion. That's, yeah, that's a, make a motion that we support Bob or make a motion that we don't support Bob. I make I move that we support Bob in not funding the one point two five nine million two oh nine for o o OPEB for twenty uh, nineteen. I'll second it because oh, I'm not sure how we're I'm not sure where the money's coming from, so I'll second it. I'll move to table. I have no idea how we can parcel this up in individual votes because we're going to either say that we want to do each individual thing and then our budget is going to balloon out of control. We're going to say we don't want to do any of these things and then we won't have a budget anymore. We can't look at this. Well, piece I, I, we I have this reverse well, well, because well, it's. Well, hold on, but I, but I think, but we have. But we have the capital program, we have the fire company, we have the seniors. I mean, we have different line items. Yeah, and this and is the most I, important. I don't think, I, I don't, hold on, I, I don't think that, I, I could be wrong, I don't think it's prudent to look at it as the, the OPEB and, 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 and all those line items and have to package them all together. I just don't think it's realistic. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, you're talking about, I mean, we're talking five, in, uh, you know, we're, we're talking yeah, this to This isn't a binary thing. You don't need so. to fund the full 1.3 million. I don't even think that this is debatable via a, a vote. I mean, it's a subjective thing, and he's going to run the numbers, and that's that could change when we look at other numbers. Uh, listen, my, listen, my, 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 my only point is I think we can say we want to do A well, or K and C. You, you know, how we, can you we, say we, not to fund it without then also in tandem saying we're, we're dipping into the reserves. Well, I, no, I, you don't, I, because I mean, that, don't. that keeps the reserves whole. So my, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to you know dip what, into you the know reserves. What, let's, let's, let's take a vote. I'm you know, fine. I'm, let's, I'm, take a let's take a vote on that. And let's the reason I, I raise that okay. first is because it's a clean, isolated number, and to some people it will be the most important number, and let's get the policy of whether we want to fund that or not. All right. Fine, let's, then let's, uh, I mean, it's a non-binding non vote, but if you want to take a poll, this is fine. I'm happy to do it. Can we take a vote? Can you do this just to kind of find yourself? Well, do we need, I mean, uh, yeah. Can we, can we make this a sense of the board? Yeah. So we'll I'm, I'm, fine, I'm fine with getting a direction. I don't think we need a sense of the board. I think we need to decide yeah. on that uh, line item. It's not binary. No, I, I have a problem with it. It's not binary. Yeah. It's it's some it's well, then, well, then vote, the vote, the vote, vote no on the, uh, uh, vote uh, no uh, on the uh, motion. I'm, I'm happy to, so let's, let's get this thing going. So let's let's do the motion. At least if, you, if it goes down, then we know that you, you want to fund some of it. Well, I don't know. Jack, did you put a motion to table this one? I'll or? withdraw my motion. Well, well, anyway, you didn't get a second. I'll, I'll second Jack's motion to table. Uh, let me withdraw it. Right. Let's just vote. Okay. We're not going to. All right, so there's a motion, there's a motion on, on the voted. floor to uh, agree what to, uh, to, uh, to support uh, Bob's yeah. recommendation of not funding the right. OPEB yep. as part of the 2019 budget. It's That's it. it. Okay. All right. Uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 <coughs> all those opposed? Aye. aye. Okay. All right. Motion fails four to three. Now it's fair. So I tried to advance. I'm trying to move us along. I know. I don't know what to do. Because when we go through the numbers, you Yeah, we're, 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 yeah. we're 90 minutes in. I'll yeah. make much progress. So let's All right. start, let's start yeah. picking. Let's, let's, I mean, um, let's, we're going to be two hours soon. Let's go. Um, all right. So the, the one other larger area that we really haven't dug into yet, and I don't, I don't know if we want to jump to sanitary yet. 
maybe we, maybe it's best that we just stick with the general fund and, and try to come to some resolution. I mean, do we think that this, some of this, the, 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 all these additions to the capital are, are, we're getting all hung up on this? I mean, a lot of this stuff wasn't in here, so. Right, yeah, I, I, I think with regard to capital, again, that's not something I think is realistic that we're gonna figure out tonight. It, that's part of a larger discussion um, and unless, unless the board wants to, with the 2019 millage, make a decision on funding capital, that's something that we can we can really drill into next year. Um, and, it, and I'll tell you from eight years of, of doing this is that what we always get hung up on are the projects themselves. And, and we started to do that tonight. Even. Yep. Like take this out, add this, take you know. So that's well, got to be part of the discussion. I'm just trying to help Bill, so just take that one out. I'm just trying to get us a little closer. But that's, I mean, that's how are we going to get through that whole list in one night? I'm, I'm giving. I'm giving. <laughs> well, my sense, I agree that we need to fund OPEP. And I think for the 49,400 number, we fund the organizations listed. Um, Wait, fund at the levels, the requested levels? Or the requested, the, the proposed levels and the manager's <laughs> yeah, They're built in. There's a little bit Except of for the 15,000. Except the 15. The 15 is not built into what was included with Bob's recommendation. Because we but didn't have it yet. We well, just got that a week ago. Okay, I, I want to fund that also. Okay. Uh, I believe that's, you could probably reduce your other increase to the senior center in order to give them that. Talk to them about that. Uh, for the fire company, I can't see giving them more than a hundred, and I think we get here by uh, ten percent tax increase and dipping into reserves a little and seeing where we go. So your number was nine, nine and a half. Nine and a half. That was one. That generates one point two. And that's only the yeah. If we had a Five percent tax increase instead of nine. How deep would we cut into the reserve? Seven hundred thousand. Just so I can get a sense of the board, do you want us to put together what a one point two million dollar cut looks like? I would be interested. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can well, do that. Well, I, I wouldn't. I we have the projects right there. No, I. I Be before we take I anything out of, I, I'm happy to have you do that. But we have projects to take it from first, right? That's, That's fine. I'm, I'm perfectly happy. But to say understand take that the, the projects aren't even in the budget. Right, right, they're right. they're sitting outside of these numbers right now. All right. they're going to do is add to the deficit. So if we're trying, if our discussion right now is to eliminate eliminate the deficit piece, then that's off the table right out of the, right off the bat because it's not even part of what's being shown as a deficit now. Well, that's what I was saying. Right. Anyway, the answer to Jackson's question is about seven. Yes. Twelve seven is the estimated real estate tax. Yeah, so uh five percent, yeah. Obviously that's half. Well, no, Bill, if you fund half. the OPEB, that's gonna be your ten percent increase and then any any of this other stuff is gonna add to it further. Yeah, and the question is how much and what, what does it do? Well, you, we're, we're, still out of, we're still at a four uh, four million dollar um, deficit even with the five percent tax. No. Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. 10% yeah. increase only gets we, you we have, we, have a yeah, yeah. we have a 345 we have a 345,000 dollar uh, current shortfall. Right. 1.3 million in in OPEB, right? Uh, I mean is that shade tree in there or not? No. I mean I could shade trees in there. Shade trees in no, there. No, the numbers I just recited, they were not in there. All that was in there is Library Arts Center, Wayne Senior Center. Radner, so hundred thousand for fire. Well, what, 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 I can put a hundred thousand in. There, there is before I forget. Fire. There's fifty-five thousand you guys can get for uh, charging a convenience fee for a credit card. It's kind of an FYI um, that I'm looking for. I'm looking at my numbers. Credit card fees. Yeah, yeah. we can get about, um, about okay. fifty or so. No, but so when you're looking at the capital plan, the, the OPEB, and the current shortfall, you're still okay. looking at Good luck. close to four four million. So six hundred and thirty. 
it just I don't think it makes sense. He's, his forty percent tax increase number is about right. He said forty seven percent. That's what you're looking at. Maybe. Yeah, forty seven percent increase if you want to do those projects and keep the fund balance. We're not talking about the projects. That's going to be I think our, our goal that for next, next year. year. We need to figure that out and so how do we fund that next year. Commissioner, does this capture what you had summarized a moment ago? So we've got the OPAS. We've got the hundred thousand right. for fire. We can we'll add in the fifteen. Right. So that that's a total of we're adding. So we're adding one point four to the half million already, and then we're putting. I, I entered a five percent tax adjustment, which would generate six hundred thirty-two thousand. Right. Um, so this is the this is the new bottom line. We we'd be upside down by about one point two million in change. All right. I'm sorry. And we take that from reserves. Um, well, that's the only place we could take it. Yeah. yeah. And then you still don't do don't, any of those projects. What if you don't do the two hundred thousand dollar increase on the OPEP and you just pay? Knocks that down by two hundred. Yeah, knocks it. So we're at one million instead of one, two, three, five, so we're at one, oh, two. Three. Bill, I'm just curious. So a ten percent, just that's a big number. It sounds great and real high when it's uh, looking for a tax increase for property tax. Be about a six hundred thousand dollar hole. Okay. What what? So what does a ten percent? Um, Increase on the average bill is that fifty-eight bucks. It's fifty-eight dollars. So it's fifty-eight dollars a month, uh, a year. A year, a year. Yes, please. So, so ten percent. I'm sorry. So ten percent is. So it's an extra five dollars a month, basically. Well, ten percent. Yeah. I mean, I. I, I well, you know. nine and a half. That's what I have in here now. It's the nine and a half. Mm -hmm. But um. So the nine and a half is a hundred dollars. Well, 120 to the average. Okay. So but let's do the I don't average. Want to get into okay. the statistics of it, but the average is, is skewed a little bit because we have some statistical outliers on the high end. Wait. That, that pull that, that average up. The, the median is a little bit more accurate. Um, the it's a difference of $20. It's a difference of $20 over, over 12 months. So it's a difference of $2 a month. But between those two groups. Wait, 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 so it's Sean, a just a sec, because I'm confused about the number. I thought that the average real estate for for per household was 588.42. So 10 percent increase would be 58.84. Yeah, and that, where are you pulling that? That's from he, he just he just doing rough numbers. Appendix C. Yeah, Exhibit C to the budget. Bear with me. Yeah, because that's one number I do want to reconcile to make sure that. Listen, 10% increase on oh. your sewer fund and your t your, your real estate tax for the township is going to make a here. huge difference okay. to a lot, a lot of people. Great. Let, let Bill in. So, the Appendix C, in order to. Uh, draw a comparison between all the different municipalities is, is we set we set the averaged value and it's probably a, a bad description we set a, a 150,000 equal across the board um, so 150,000 is not the actual average assessed value in Radnor uh, oh. but what we did is we made it the same for everyone so that the so millage calculation was compare was the same across other, all of the uh, the peer group. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So the number's right. So it's a hundred use one hundred and twenty well, off of the the average, and it's a hundred off of the median. It, I mean, it doesn't. So it's a hundred. So so how, how much does the average person pay in real estate taxes per year? Yeah. So this is the Radner raw data Township here Township that Radner comes to Radnor Township, Township, the county. Um, I'm just curious. Five hundred dollars. Go to the end of the end of the table. What, what's that? You need to do a sum. You give us average. Yeah. Oh, it's because I haven't filtered. <laughs> Filters will get you. I had a filter for residential. So the average assessment in 27 with the 2017 data, 322,820. Okay. 
Okay. So if you take that divided by, we you, you apply the divided by a thousand three times three times billion. three point two. So it's a three hundred twenty-eight thousand. So divided three twenty-nine. Hold on, three twenty-nine divided. So it's divided by a thousand, which is three hundred twenty-nine times what? Times three point two two nine, which is our current mortgage. Three. What's that number? Three point two two nine. Got it. No, not point three, it's three point two two nine. So raising it by ten percent, you're paying an extra one hundred and four bucks. Yeah, so he's got a thousand forty two is what he's saying is the So average. okay. So then the, the calculator's right. That's where it's getting that hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's a difference of an an extra hundred dollars a year? To the median taxpayer. Yeah. <laughs> so at it's, nine so and it's a half dollars a month? At nine and a half percent. So <coughs> to keep up so it's an extra eight dollars a month to keep up a lot of our services. What? It's eight dollars a month to fill up a, a makeup into an OPEB, which oh, doesn't no, do a thing for the for the no, 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 I'm talking constituents. No, no. Yeah, that's what it is. One point two. You see it right there. Even well, if we don't pay it now, we're going to you're going to have to pay it. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's not, that's not the issue. The issue is also funding some things that we want to fund. That's and we live in Radnor because of certain intangibles. I mean, we li don't live here because necessarily property taxes are low. It's good when they're low, but we're here for our parks and for all the amenities, and they have to get funded. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I was looking at numbers last year, and if you look at the, C, the CPI, which is a core uh, uh, price in, uh, the consumer price index, in 2017, it went up 2.1%. In 2018, so far, it's gone up 2.1%. Two percent. So it's 2% CPI. Yeah, it's index. 2 over, over the last And you guys are going to do 500% more than the... No. Than, than rich, rich, yes. rich, your numbers couldn't be more off. It's and not more. It's not off. Irresponsible what, what you're saying I, and, and I what you're trying to just have is a 500% tax increase, Rich? Yeah. It's 500% I mean, no, increase. 500% yes. increase over the CPI. Oh, Okay. <laughs> right. Just, to, just to show yeah, us a comparison of where we look at the taxes, the comparison of how we do with all of with our taxes here. So it shows, you know, where we are. The last two years, differences when you see the big there, or where we rank rank with other communities. But then, if you just peel it, it all back and just show what the township share is, look how low we are as the township. So, and these numbers incorporate a ten percent tax increase. So that's with our increased millage. Uh, you know, let me let me just touch upon what you said. If you go back to 2000, when was the last tax increase four years ago? If you go back to 2013, okay, from 2013 to, to October of 2018, the CPI has increased 9.8%. So you know what, Rich, what you said would be in line. So with regard to millage so increases, there was an increase in 2016 that right. was tied directly to, right. to library bonds. parks and trail bonds. Right. Um, the last millage increase for operations was back in 2013. Right. And and since then we've also added this the rain five, tax for 4.6 percent increase in 2016. Rain tax and increase the sewer fee 10 percent. Last year. I'm not saying that I want to do it. I'm saying that you need to look at all the alternatives. The rain tax itself was a 7 percent tax increase. So let's say we're in the same situation this time next year and we cut into reserves and we haven't funded OPEC. What do we do? Like, is, is your, I, I recognize you're predicting so you don't know for sure, but is your position that you're expecting that next year we would be able to replenish the reserves and fund OPEC appropriately or next year we're going to have the same problem? Uh, no, I, I, would, I would predict that next year we have the same problem. But fewer dollars in reserve. Yeah. So, I since last Monday I went and, and updated these forecast numbers. Um, I for 2020 I did put the OPEP funding back in, um, even at the base level, which is why you see. I lost my headers over here. But this is why you see under payroll and liabilities that jump up. The way it did from 10.2 to 11.7. That's reinstituting the OPEP funding. Um, so just on the base, you see the deficit grow. And in 2022, you've got negative cash on hand. Yeah. I mean, what is practically speaking, what does that mean for us? 
Well, that that's an impossibility. Yeah, yeah, we can't, can't get to that. So, so you've depleted all your reserves by then? By 2022. Okay. Everything else being equal. And no tax. So in four years, we'll have, have and we'll, no we'll draw right. we'll no taxes. With we'll, no tax. We'll, we'll draw down everything. So, yeah. But I think this right. goes back to that conversation that the board needs to have often and a, a detail of how this all works. Now, you had the plan that Carfac had developed about how we fund capital. There would be a permanent, that would be a plan that could be in place, how we could address that. Um, how we are going to fund, we can, we can again look at the staffing level again, if you'd like to say, here's what, where we are. Um, but you can actually talk about how we are, how you are going to address these prioritized projects and then allow a plan because again too we'll look at something later here but it, you're not going to take big bites all at the time all at the same time yeah bill, bill how much data do you have in july with this stuff i mean would it be i guess my question is would it be good not that i want another budget meeting in july but can you get an accurate snapshot so we don't have this much these these as you know all these questions come now and even with three meetings, we're still going to be scrambling. Yeah. Is there a, a good time period, uh, July or August, and you know where you're like, all right, this is how it's going to look coming through for the rest of the year? Sure. Yeah. So uh, July is actually anytime after May, it, the picture clears up significantly because okay. that's yeah that's when we've gone through all of our billing and collection cycles for the fees and taxes. So maybe sometime in June or July to re almost revisit this. So yeah, July would be perfect. Okay. And my hope would be you would meet in January, February, March, April, and May, and prior to, so that all the details that are in here are all set. Yeah, that, that, so I think that unfortunately all, it all comes together. Too many, too much other business to take care of day to day. I, I would say we should we should follow the manager's recommendation and not fund the OPEB this year. That's the that only case. way. Thank only you. way you we have We already chance. voted. We already voted. voted no, you wanted to vote. The answer was no. You, you and all right, well, well, it's not going to fix the long term problem. It's not going to address the long term problem. Am I right? That is right. Yeah. So we could defer it for a year and then pick it up again. It, but it's not going to fix the problem. It will fix the problem. We it just we just not. take we an extra year to fix the problem. Uh, now there's a the point only way the problem, problem, the only way the problem gets fixed this. in future years is if the the business taxes build back up to where they had been growing to. Um, and we because that's that's that. what we relied upon when we built yeah. the plan and funded it for all these years was growth on business taxes. So those back up. We're back to where we were in 2013 when we instituted the plan. We, we just the revenue's not there, and that justifies not yeah, paying for it this year. Yeah, I, I mean, but the, the, the totally only way this works going approach. forward is if those revenues come back, and we can't guarantee that we, we can't guarantee it. We can, but I but I think for this year because it, I mean it is lower this year. I mean I, I don't want to forego it either, but I think maybe for this year because we it is lower. I, I, well, I know, I know. I'm not in a perpetuity, but I think maybe for this year, and then that would enable us to fund to give the fire company what they're looking for, which I'd like to do, the senior center. And I, I think we fund the essentials, and we need to get that back on track. I understand that, but we we've, we're losing. We, there, there's revenue that's missing here that, that I think is an essential piece of that. That's I, I, just I my thought. I think that's a false. That gives us yeah. a false yeah. sense of security, that, and then we're just going to be right back where we are next. I, I, I would venture to say that funding the the employees that work for the township is an essential. To me, no, to this, is, this is post-employment benefits for those sure, who have had yes. in the past. Correct. Either and, and, way, and the it is an obligation yes. that it made, the, a commitment was made by prior boards or whomever, um, and we can't ignore that. All we're talking about and is instead of paying it in 2054, paying it in 2055. You're kicking the, first of all, you're kicking the can down the road, and second of all, the employees that that work here, that some of them are in this room, I don't think that they want to. No one in this room gets no one in this okay. room. Okay, all right. Well, the, the firefighters. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I just spoke. The firefighters. I'm sorry. The, 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 the policemen downstairs. I think that they're going to want to hear that they work for 20 plus years. That they're going to get what they're entitled. They they are counting on it anyway. Can I just? It's going to be our problem if the money's not there. When we yeah. voted upon yeah. this. Yeah. Your vote was was. We made all, your all, vote. all we voted we for need, was not to. not to put zero in there, but we all didn't right. say how much we're going to put in. So, there. so, so we could have what one point two nine million more votes. 
Right, you so could, yeah. Have <laughs> so let's 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 so all of a sudden, four years later, we'll be like, oh, let's scrap that. We're not going to do it. I, I think Which that... Just one year delay. I, I, I think that we'll still be no, at the same... The we'll be at the same place next year. It. Yeah, and then we'll... Right. we'll so we need to give them. Let's 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 show the graph again. Let's let's give instead of debating this, we've debated this enough. Let's let's give a direction here. So is there going to be a millage increase, and are we going to dip into the reserves? Let's give him a direction, and then we can have something set for the twenty-six. I would be interested in seeing a millage increase in the neighbor. I mean, I'll, I'll, not hide the ball. I sent an email out today. I've gotten a decent number of responses thus far, suggesting a five or six percent millage increase. Not one person has said that they didn't want to do that. I need to send another email out because I got the numbers wrong, apparently. But I don't think it's really going to move the needle for the people that I'm talking to. I don't think it would be significant. No, I mean, I was suggesting it was going to be like $60 instead of $100 or something. They're not going to care. But my residents thus far are pushing me that they would like to see a millage increase. I would be interested in seeing numbers in the neighborhood of 6%. And I would be interested in seeing numbers increase year over year in 2020, 21, and 22, so that we give ourselves the flexibility if the mercantile and business privilege taxes go back up in 2020, 21, and 22, we don't have to follow through with that plan. But if we need to, can we get back on track to avoid the deficit in 2022? Well, that'll be next year's discussion. Sure. Well, and then also start to make some plans to address these things that have not been addressed. Right. And, you know, the capital plan, the sewers. I mean, the list goes on and on. What the WBA wants, you know. I. Sure. And we talk about the business privilege tax and people vacating the area and going to other places. You know, it's it's a very real thing, and I think we need to to talk about that and look at that and have some resources to put behind that. You know, we may not have it this year, but you know, why can't we start to build in so that moving forward we have uh, we have some resources to look. Bob, well, what's what's the policy on the reserve? Twenty or twenty-five percent? 25 percent. 25 percent of expenditures. Of expenditures. Right. right. So what I'm hearing is this is a tax and spend board that you want to tax them and spend and spend more money. I'd like to avoid well, a financial crisis. There's, 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 yeah, there's, there's, there's not a financial are. crisis. There's, 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 there's things will be in 2022. Again. There's a big red well, number with parentheses around. Here, here's how we solve it. Don't fund OPEB this year and or then don't do those extra projects. Yeah, or just never fund OPEB. That's not going to get us there. That's no, not no. We'll, fund it. There. we'll fund it next year when the business like privilege seven, revenues come back yeah. up. And so we can cross our fingers and hope that that happens? Yep. That's what we did this year. <laughs> Didn't come through. That's what we do every year. Well, it's a guess. We, it's always a guess. Business no, privilege revenue okay. is always no. a guess. Which is why I would be interested in seeing a year over year increase so that we have flexibility. Instead of saying just 1% increase. Yeah, but Which we really can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then well, the other question is: so, do we do we, like do we want to see? Do we want to dip into the reserves? Do we want to explore changing that? Is that yeah. something the board wants to look into? Yeah, if you want to do the project, have to decreasing do. that. Have to. I think we may have to dip into the reserves a little bit if the number is six percent, which is what I threw. Yeah, because six percent won't be cover the OPEP. It's got to be ten percent for the OPEP plus so anything else. It sounds like, in, in the hopes of moving this along, Bill. Yeah. So, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like what the board wants to see is a 6%, what the numbers look like and what can be done with a 6% increase and in dipping into the reserves, and knocking that down to 20%, 15%, what, what, what's, the, what's the thought there? And you also want to see what the cut looks like? No, I'm not, I'm not interested. I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't imagine there's much there. You're gonna you're 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 gonna get you're gonna give us stuff that you're gonna give us stuff that's basics. I mean, I'm sure you are, and that's I because of the budgets, all, and that's yeah. because we don't have a lot of fat. I don't think we. Yeah, have, I, don't I think, think, I think you got, we had eighty thousand. So don't even don't, don't, in, don't last in my opinion. Don't spend your time on that. I'm, I'm, it sounds like the will is to 
increase millage to a certain extent and to change our reserve policy to a certain extent. All right, so let's get I'm, it clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for direction. Let's get it clear what they want that reserve, they want that increase to be. Well, you want, six, you want, you want to fund OPEP, that's 10% increase. Rich, it sounds like 6% is the number that, that, that. Okay, but 6%. Board, hold, on, hold on, hold on. It looks like 6% would be the number that the board is, uh, wants to see what that would look like in terms of what can be funded. And then, again, the only question I think the bill needs to know is what percentage are we looking to change the reserve policy? But, so but well, I disagree. So That's not what I have to change the reserve yeah, policy. What, we need to see what it would look like, what the increase looks like. Yeah, if we need yeah. to change that so policy, right? Yeah, so this is 6%. That's why I'm asking. So, so 6% and then put back in the full 1.2 on the OPEP. It's there. Okay. Um, I, it's, I still only have 100 for the fire company. Um, and then 15 for seniors. Take, take that out. I took shade tree. Well, that was part of what we talked about earlier. Is, is that's out. Um, this is what the number looks like. So we've got 1.1 and some change. That would be the deficit in the general fund um, and we'd be roughly a million and a half short on cash on, uh, for the, the reserve on the, on the funding policy right yeah, we'd be a 1.5 million short on our funding policy but we wouldn't be out of cash balance. Balance. we would just need to get that back, back next year yeah. we'd have to get or that back in next year which again uh, everything else being equal that number grows mm -hmm. To 2.7 in 2020. Well, the projects you, you have with that six percent in there. Not a single no, one. Not a single one. There you go. Not a single project. Yeah. So that's only going to add to the. the, the it's the, only going to further complicate the discussion and add to the, the yeah. problem that needs to be well, solved. So I think you all look at the sanitary or sewer side. Yeah, but that's going to look like a 19 of them. But we're going to fund that separate. I, I, I yeah, but it's still, if you look at the, I think you still want to consider, or you still want to look at it and say, uh, look, we can't raise this. Uh, that's that's right. Right. I don't think you should consider it because it's going to stand on its own. There's already a separate increase for it. There's already a separate note that's been issued, and there's got to be another borrowing well, for but that. That's, but, but that's part of what I'm taking into consideration when I was saying I don't really want to get into millage because we're already most likely going to be raising the sewer rent exactly. again, another 20, another 10 percent. That's 20 percent. I think that goes back to what we said. The I voted for it. I voted for it again. brought us back to neutral. Bill, one of them. Uh, yeah. yeah. We've yeah. never, it's we have 160 in it, it here for the transfer. You're concerned with the capital for sewer, though. No, that just caught us up. That's why, to me, I would worry that if we had a break next year, or everything goes haywire. Yeah. We're yeah. back into the general fund yeah. to pay for it. Into the the budget has 160,000 transfer for the open space purchase out of the general fund. But in fact, we have authorization from for electoral debt for that. Yes. So 160,000 of this, whatever the increase is, it, let's say 6%, we can explain one point. One hundred sixty thousand dollars of that I as electoral that's debt. Uh, that, that electoral debt did not cover that. That's exactly what it covered. No. Yeah, I, 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 I. This is my opinion, I, and it's certainly not a legal opinion. But I think we'd have a hard time making that argument so long as the one hundred sixty thousand dollar transfer remains in the general fund to the. Oh no! I'm saying remove it. I'm just saying. When you want to explain to somebody that we're increasing your taxes, there's a portion of that that you already approved. My, my view on that is that the 11.8 million for the Artras and bonds, that's the electoral debt that was authorized. That what this extra is not part of it. Yeah, I, well, then borrow 160. It could be my my fund accounting mind, but I would I would keep it separate. I mean, yeah, you could make any argument you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've never taken advantage of that electoral debt. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. It's true. Use general fund. Yes. Well, you know, we're, yes. I think we're, we're maintaining the services that people expect um, from Radnor Township. Hopefully being able to make start to make some plans for future things that have not been addressed. We have to, we cannot not pay those, uh, the, those benefits, those, uh, the OPEP. We can't, 
that is only continues to kick the can down the road and we have so many other things that we've kicked down the road we I don't think we can add one more thing to that list um, well, you know it's easy for it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy deferral. for boards it's it, we don't have the money for it next year right? and then we're gonna have to pay back the, the, yeah. the shortfall, we'll that's one more, and then that's one more, another million and a half we have to pay back. And it shows up on our annual CAFR. Well, if, if you have, then you, you're not believing that the business privilege and mercantile tax revenues are going to come up. I'm not 100% confident that that's going to happen. I, I, yeah, I, my, my big concern is uh, tapping into the reserves. Uh, that's, that's the safety net. And it looks to it be that it's going to get depleted in five years if we're on this current pace. So to start doing it now, uh, you know, I mean, I think that you need to balance this budget. You, you need to balance it and not cut into no. reserves. We actually had an overage. Well, then you need to cover that one point four million dollar number, eighteen, which that'll be another test. So you, I was still if you want to cover that one point four, you can say twenty percent increase in millage. Plus a ten percent increase in the sewer. You either pay for it now or you pay for it later. There's no, there's no silver bullet. There's no great answer. Something's going to give. And, it always and you've kicked, more later. and you and you've kicked the can down the road. And Bob said it at the last meeting. You kicked the can so far down the road. Eventually, you hit a wall. We're at that wall. He said it. We're, We're not at that, at that wall. wall. We're not at that wall. We we don't things. need to spend that. It's not a foregone conclusion. There's no. Force of nature. There's no law of physics so all we that do requires is we give to spend another board's responsibility. Yep. Is that what you're suggesting? You need to take ownership and fix because it. Because that's I'm what I'm other taking boards ownership did, and, not and now it. it's sitting with us. So I, I, I take an full ownership <laughs> and not spending money. That's the difference. Well, Instead of continuing to spend and then raising taxes. Well, we so what? So look, look, look what you're, in essence what we're doing. Business has been paying less because their revenues went down. You shifted that to the public. That's what you're doing. So you're taking that money and you're saying, all right, public, you all pay it because businesses, that money came, we came up short. Then the, you know what, let's, let's put it this way. Radnor has some of the best schools, not in the, in the, in the state, if not the best. We pay? We pay for it. No, it's no, us. <laughs> no. It is us, Rich. It's my wife and Rich, the board's listen, not our Rich, board. please stop. It. Please don't interrupt. And we pay for it, and we pay money, and we get a great service, and that is that hopefully keeps, what, what, like, like I say, our property, our property values valuable. And we want the same thing with our services. And the, the school board unfortunately raises their taxes, but they get a good product. Our product is, is if we raise our taxes. We can fund some of these things that make rather such a special place to live. Something's going to give. OPEB does not make a bit of difference to any. Resident. Absolutely, it does because but it's if not you, no, no, if, if if you if you tell a policeman downstairs, hey, when you retire, we may or may not fund, you know, your, your benefits. You know, you may not be able to get the best crop of policemen. The policeman doesn't care because he doesn't he, care. it's promised. Yeah. And he's, it, as far as he's concerned, it's a legal obligation. we got to come across with it. In Whether we fund it now or not. It's a legal it's obligation. We have to pay for it. We can't, we can't just right. defer well, it and well, continue to defer it. That is how we got to this we point. we were broke when we had the review of the audit. Going Remember? back going back to the discussion in 2013, the, the benefit of adopting the funding plan Solid, is because it was primarily because at some point down the road it's going to cost more out of the operating budget to fund the plan than it would be to to get into the the to pre-fund it and it's like that's not an accurate description because we're already to fund it 20 years yeah, to, yeah to, it's to a real actuarial liability it's cheaper to do that today and it gives the board more financial flexibility to pre-fund the or to, to fund the program with the plan than it is to to not do it because down the road instead of spending four million a year or five million a year to fund the plan it, the pay as you go is going to end up being seven million so the officer is still going to get his his health care but the township's going to be spending more for it at that point than they would if we were to fund it now so that's where it that's the relationship in funding the program and it, how it you trickles you're, down to the everyday service. And then we're going to have to get the residents to pay for it. Uh, anyway. But we're not funding it now. Worse. We're, not, we're not funding it until 2055. 
2054. Well, every year that we contribute to the funding plan, the money's going into a, a trust account and accruing interest. So the market is helping fund the program and Just not having to do that with taxes or uh, but, but today's no, cash flow. Can't, can't the reverse be true? In the sense of if you keep drawing this stuff down, drawing our reserves down, and we do have to float a bond, or we have to float a bond because we don't have, like we, we're floating a bond for sewer, we Can't may have to, right. no, but eventually we're <coughs> going to run out of money, we're going to be leveraged to the hill, and you're going to be paying more in interest to fund yeah, some of these things. And that's when we can get into our general obligation versus revenue. Well, bonds. you guys can all vote for a 20% tax increase on the constituents and, and another 10% on the sanitary sewer. You guys go ahead. It's, it's not, and, and then not do, not, <laughs> It's, it's the wrong way to go. So you, you, you majority majority rules, if that's what you want to do, you go ahead. All right, so I, I don't think I anyone said 20%. So, all right, so, so, it has so, to be 20%. Right, so no. where, where, no. so no. where are we going from here? Well, this, this, this is where the numbers are, as, as I understand them right now. Um, with the 6% tax increase, again, the, putting the OPEP funding back in for 2019. No projects. No projects. 100 for the 100 for fire, 15 additional for the seniors. We're at a 1.1 million dollar deficit um, and roughly seven and a half ending cash balance, which puts us roughly one and a half short on our policy. And if it were nine percent, if it were nine percent, 300. looks more like that so we're still all just still million. still a million yeah. short on our yeah you, know, you got to go to the full 10 just to cover a little bit I said 20 yeah. okay. Bill, if those, if those are the yeah, numbers like I, I would be interested in, in cuts of 150,000 to Thank fully you. fund your three fire department yeah, every year so there are additional requests to get that up to 250 250 yeah, I'd be grateful if you guys could go through and look at whatever cuts you think that we have and whatever small benefits that you think that we have. I'm definitely going to get comments from constituents saying, well, why can't we do just a zillion small cuts or a zillion small benefits? And it would be helpful for me to be able to say, well, we've looked at that, here's what we've got, here's what it would take. You're going to have to lose the parks or something. Well, last meeting we approved new new employee structure that was saved seventy thousand dollars. We did that. Yeah. 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 What we can do, and that's in there. That seventy thousand is in there. And what we it can is. do is we can look. We can look at this to see what we can yeah. do that to meet this. So, I frankly know that you have done this in advance. I don't like the idea of saving money is not a novelty that I've just come up with for you guys to look into. I get that. But I'd be grateful if you could give me something that I could distribute. We can do that. You going to give him any suggestions? Suggestions where he should do that? I'm asking him for the suggestion where he should. We will. We will do that. And adding in revenue, like if we can charge like credit card fees. Or yeah. Yep. Yeah, what is this? What, I, what are the credit card fees? What is so that? right now the township allows residents to pay for all kinds anything of other than real estate taxes. We don't allow credit card payments on real estate taxes today. Uh, so for all of those other transactions, the township's incurring a fee to process that credit card, and we are not passing that fee on to the end user. So. The option is there to charge uh, a convenience fee on those transactions to, um, to help two, offset 2%. the cost. Of what if you two percent or more? Well, we have there's so there's there's legality in doing that. We have to make sure that um, I don't know if you can make it a percentage of the the transaction or if you make it a flat fee. Uh, but we, either way, you get to the same result. Uh, we know. We can estimate how many transactions there are and we can cover that fee. So right now the township's incurring in the ballpark of fifty thousand a year in credit card transactions. And I would suspect that number's only gonna go up because when we roll out the new uh, utility and real estate tax pieces, the software, 
it's going to allow customers or residents to create an account and manage those things uh, on their own. And I but think we that's look at the bank train being able to bank do bank transfers. Yeah, I, well, yeah. you're going to be able to do that when you create your account. You're going to be able to pay with credit card. You can do a bank transfer all through your personal resident account. Uh, so I think the number of transactions paid with credit cards is going to go up. Uh, so that would be one way to. And right now, that's a fifty thousand dollar expense. We can cover that through a fee. Um, and put fifty thousand dollars back in the bottom line. And on the flip side, um, you know, the resident has to pay a little bit more at that transaction if they use a if they use a credit card. If you get enough people who don't want to pay the fee, they can still mail a check, come in here, and they don't incur the fee. Um, and at the same time, the township doesn't have to pay it. So it's it. No matter what, you get to the same end result. Now this is the first time. In, we talked about this way back in 2011, I think. Clever. And there weren't enough transactions yet to make it something that the board even wanted to consider because the expense was so small. Uh, but it has grown. So this is the first time we've really talked about it. Since. Look at the number of people you mentioned using Wush, which has pretty significant fees associated with Wush. Yeah, so that's the one transaction where we are covering 100% of the cost. Yes. And when that program was adopted, the board approved the fee being added to the transaction so that it was self uh, self sufficient or didn't add cost to the township. Right. So that's I mean that's something to consider. Again, that's probably not a decision we're going to make here tonight, but it's it's on the schedule. table. All right. So which can always be amended. So, so this what was the number you have on that? What's the increase? That's nine. This is nine. Nine percent, and then one point. Uh, 1.08 million dollar deficit versus policy uh, and then us coming back to you next Monday with um, some thoughts on uh, operational cuts to at a minimum increase the fire funding from 100,000 as it is here up to their requested if not more And then, so Bill, I know you, you know, you've got a lot on your plate with all this, but can you start to think about how we start to talk about the capital piece oh, yeah. moving forward and put, I, I think we should have a schedule. I think we shouldn't just leave it to, you know, oh, maybe we'll do it on this night. I think we need a schedule uh, of when we're going to talk about this and a plan on how we're going to move forward. I would like to see, and I don't know if anyone who wasn't on the board prior um, would like to see what Carfax had put together um, as a recommendation. Uh, I would say let's go back to Carfax fresh. But, but, but we need, that was a good point. Needed to study a few more members. members. I, I, if we have, if we have something, let's let's at least take a look at it. Well, I, I didn't think it was a good plan. It was, it's permanent. It's not managing. What that is is permanent money. That it's not managing. All right. Well, so I, I'd like to have a look at it again. Seven of us here. Six of us. I'd like to I'd like to see it <clears throat> so where, where does that leave us Just well it, so that leaves us with the numbers as they are here what we'll come back with next Monday is, are the the remaining pieces with regard to administrative cuts uh, we'll finalize the numbers and then next Monday we'll need the board to to vote to fill in uh, to fill in the blank for the ordinance for the village if that and that shortfall of one point, I'll round up 1.1 million is with a tax increase or without a tax increase? With. with. Oh, How nine much? Nine percent. And it doesn't fund any of the capital projects. I'm assuming none that none of the pay is you, you. None of the pay yeah. is you use. The pay as you go is covered. That's covered. Yes. Many of the capital projects, I assume, have some kind of grant funding that we will lose if we don't do the projects. Though. Some do, but um, I mean, theoretically, we'll come up with a, a way to fund. Theoretically, next year at some point, we we come to a conclusion or a decision on how to fund these and, and do so. Uh, what what would be the decision? We're going to open a currency press. 
You're talking about <laughs> issuing <laughs> money you're talking about another bond, bond issue? Money that's, that's on the table. Um, I think the big sales are pretty good. You got some of the big sales that are, wash are in need of repair that didn't make the last bond the, issue. There was nothing in there for Harford. Harford needs a number in there. That or Rizio sitting right out there, but you've got a lot of the other parks. Since we're, since we're, we're not got, funding anything, can we put, put some money in for Harford? But the other question you got is, like is, more is the trails. You know, all the trails, we've got the plans of that, but are we going to fund that to get those built? Well, TAP's yeah, fully funded. funded. TAP is, is the I, exception. The TAP one, correct. Yeah. But we've got the other ones. Bill, <laughs> Bill, what is the median and average increase to the average and median taxpayer of 9.8? Uh, is how much is going to add on their mortgage or their 114.95? Yeah, let me just double check that against the calculator. That uh, I think that's the value statement. There is it. Is it worth X amount to keep the service and the standard of living in Renner? Yeah, 114 and 95. 114 a year to the average. 114 to the average, which is 95 to the so give or take 10 bucks a month. I'm asking Bill on, on this yeah. model right here, yeah. give or take, it's, it's about ten dollars sure. a month yeah. to the yeah. average. Yeah. More yeah. Because you have more money, right? Or you at least you get more money. Um, Bob, do we have a, do we have a sense on when we'll be getting the uh, the sewer assessment? Back, the sewer assessment. We've got to get that authorized. Excuse me. We've got to get that authorized by the board. I thought the board. I thought I talked to the. No, where we left it was. We were, don't raise we were going to get a proposal. We were going to build a proposal and come back to the board with a proposal. Okay, so when, when do you think that's going to be? I'm going to guess it's probably the December 10th meeting. Okay. Where uh, again, there's various, like Bill said, there's various levels of what you want to get. Do you want to get a we true assessment of it or just a quick skim over? But I think if we, if we can move to the sanitary source, that's another big piece of this. That has an impact to the general fund. Oh, well. Okay, so. All right, so the sanitary sewer fund um, is, it, it is its own separate fund and it, within that fund should be self-sustaining. Uh, 2017 and 18 uh, were exceptions to that rule, uh, but hope w with the borrowing, we're gonna be able to correct that. So going forward, um, if we're going to fund this like a real utility, it should be self-sufficient. The way that this spreadsheet is set up is a little is a little different, only because it's not as complicated as the general fund. Um, I'll start with the sewer rent assumption, sewer rent assumption, um, and what this does. So we were at five dollars and ninety cents for a number of years. Actually, from 14 through 17, we're at five dollars and ninety cents. Now, in 18, we jumped up to 6.49, which was the 10 percent increase that the board adopted last year. Uh, at the same time, the board uh, that adopted that it would be 10 percent again for 19 and 20. Uh, that's a plan. Obviously, past boards can't bind future boards, uh, but that's what I have built into this right now. Is 10 percent for 19. I think we said 10 percent for 20. Also, definitely. Yeah. So three years of 10 percent. So I, I have that here too, but I don't want to get too yeah. entrenched on 20 yet. Um, but for 19, the other component of this, and we talked about it uh, back in October, was what we, what the water consumption may may or may not be. So a year ago, when we were talking about the 10 percent increase for 2018, we were assuming that that would generate a half a million in revenue to the fund. It ended up only generating <coughs> about 200,000 because water consumption dropped. Um, so uh, right now, 
the, we have the 10% built in and this is forecasted out uh, again based on a, a linear average uh, or a linear uh, calculation of prior years uh, which again uh, there's not a whole lot else to go on because we don't get any kind of data from aqua uh, that tells us what water consumption is um, Bill, sorry to interrupt. So I did actually look into that, and I took about 10, 15 minutes. The amount of water that um, washing machines that are using these days are less, as well as uh, dishwashers are drastically less, toilets. and toilets as well. And yeah, so when, we, when, when you live in Radnor and you live in a fairly affluent community, and when your washing machine breaks, you get the newer one, which is more water efficient. And all the new construction is using all this. But you are, I think that you are, the trend is correct. You will see a decline in the amount of water usage going forward. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, so if we do a 10% increase, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to realize what, what this is predicting is a, a 400 and some thousand in additional revenue. We may or may not realize that, um, but that's you know, that that's what's built into this right now. Um, on the spending side, we have uh, 1.9 million in capital. You couple that with the two million nine that's going to be returned to the general fund. That that chews up our four and a half million that we borrowed. Um, so we are covered on the capital side for next year. Um, the fund itself would show a $2.1 million deficit, uh, which would bring our cash, I know it's, it's a light shaded green, but that number is 1.17 or 1.18 million, um, which as we've learned in the last two years, that's one, that's one project. That's one emergency broken pipe and that cash is gone and the Obviously, the big, biggest expense of this fund is our you know, four plus million to RHM that we pay quarterly. So at any given time, we need to have uh, over a million dollars in the fund just to pay RHM. So if we pop that line in July, which they like to go on July 4th, roughly yeah. you know, around midnight, so we're paying quadruple time to get the guys out to fix Ooh. it. But um, if we do that, then we don't even have a ca enough cash to, to fund RHM for the rest of the year. So this is another fund that we don't have a uh, cash balance policy on the books, but it's it's probably one that we should talk about um, <coughs> in the grand, in the larger scheme of how we're gonna fund this program. And there will be increases coming from RHM huge from Philadelphia. It's just when does it hit, and that will be huge to us, the impact. Could also that, be a new, a new interceptor. That's, and that's one that's been on the books waiting for approval. So now there, we actually are paying money in to RHM. That they're setting, the, aside they're setting aside. Yeah. For them. So the number that we have in for RHM came directly from their budget. And we, we talked about this last year. For um, the commissioners that are new, it, RHM gives us a, a budget, and it's based on their predicted flows. Um, but what happens every fourth quarter is, is they, they reconcile those and usually we get a pretty large discount, like half a million. And it's a significant discount. So we're always stuck in, you know, do we budget for what they're telling us that we're gonna have to pay them or do we budget based on what we think that it's actually gonna end up being? Um, this 4.14 is somewhere in between those two numbers. It's not everything they're telling us that we're gonna have to pay them. Uh, it assumes we'll get some discount in the fourth quarter of next year. Uh, but there's always that risk that we don't get the discount, although in eight years, the eight years I've seen it, we've gotten it every year, and uh, I just haven't gone back to prior years. So, so with its 10% increase in the fee, uh, this fund is still at a $2.1 million deficit, um, and it, it's going to be uh, close on cash. Uh, again, it, it gives us no flexibility, no leverage or leeway. And if for whatever reason, or for all of the reasons, if water consumption does go down, and we don't realize the 400 and some thousand dollar increase in revenue that we think the 10% is gonna generate, that just worsens the position for the fund. What increase would you need to be square? Uh, 
So I don't have this set up like I do the general fund where I can, it's already calculating. It's just something that I, uh, <laughs> I play with until I get to the right number. But I think that's like that's the short term look. That's where we want to look at the long term, because you've got some systems, especially Jack, in your work, mm -hmm. from the engineers are saying that is so brittle over there that that could go at any time. That's the worst area that we have of sanitary sewers. But we haven't had we've been fortunate we haven't had the breaks that they've been in other areas. We've got pump stations that are critical that have to be replaced. So that's why when you look, that's why we want to talk about the years out where we're just going to have to decide are we going to be on the front end and try to fix some of these. I mean, we're not even, we don't even have included Midland in this thing. And there could be a break there at any time. That system's so bad. Well, it's already broken. Not, not, not in that area, it hasn't. Well, Midland, it's yeah. already cracked up. It's already. But I, but I mean, you've got, you've got, like Bill said, you know, one break and we're, we're, we're going to get a break next year. We're going to be looking to go to the Well, don't, don't put the jinx on it. I just know that I can if call you don't, don't say anything, and, anything and we'll be fine. Just up out of the grass. Shh, so don't right. say anything. We, we did, we, it was only the last couple of years we had problems, and we hadn't for years before that. It had, we, it, we hadn't had huge expenditures for many years. The sewer yeah, system's I, not getting any younger. Yeah, I, I think, think it's there. more of a yeah. situation where the sewer's hitting that age where it is actually falling apart. Well, what are the, what's the $2 million in projects you have set, you're doing right now, then? Well, I, uh, we don't even have Jack, to answer your question, uh, roughly $10, we'd have to jump up to 10, which is 54% increase over where we're at now. So we go from 650, 640, 649 to 10. That gets us to a, a positive net revenue number for 2019. Um, but not in 2020, with a 10% increase over. 10 yeah, there, there are some additional factors built into these out years that we didn't really want to get into tonight um, but it, additional capital as well as uh, some additional operating in terms of um, manpower and equipment needed to maintain the system going forward um, so I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't print these numbers in ink yet uh, there's still a lot to, do, to talk about and come to agreement on. Uh, and that increase, what's the average household paying? So the average bill in 2018 was $418. Uh, again, assuming water consumption is the same year over year, um, the jump would be about $226. We kind of needed to be a jump of $226, otherwise we're not square. In one year, if we were going to take a big swing in one year, yeah, um, yeah, but that's a big swing. Yeah, Jack, I mean, you're talking about 47% increases in taxes for the township and 50% increases on sewer rent. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out what gets us to even. I it, haven't it, it doesn't get us to even. It, it, it's, it's, um, that gets us to even. That's why I asked the question. It's all how you calculate it. <laughs> no, I think that's just when you subtract two numbers and get zero. The 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 number that we need is the debt service. Is all we need. And if there's a water number, if there's a water decrease number, then you you guys need to do a, a good estimate of what the decrease is so we cover that. That's what's driving that the decrease in water consumption and debt service attributable to the notes. And well, and increases to RHM. I mean, that's that's another big one. And maintenance of the existing sewer and replacement of the parts that need to be replaced. And having money if the emergencies happen. Well, Emergency again, the, notes, the note takes care of that. No, this is only million takes care million. of the... This note only takes care of the... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. No, the what does this point, note take care of? It, 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 it puts us back... It makes us even. It basically puts us back to where we wanted to be months ago. Coupled with we have debt service now going forward. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And that's what we that's what we built in. That's what the increase was for. But we again, to again, to pay see, we, we really got to clean clean up, clear up. What is the four point five million? 
because two million is only only two million is going back to the general fund for reimbursement. Yeah, the there's two, two and a half million for projects you guys have in the works. Yeah. What are those? What's in the works? Because that's that's a lot of money for in the works and as a, a stopgap. No. You're you're scare, you're, scare, you're scaring these folks. We're doing an assessment. You're going to tell us what what it needs. Two and a half million is a stopgap assessment. Uh, so the projects that are in there, um, this isn't the right spreadsheet, uh, I apologize, because this is 4.2 million. Um, today the only thing that we're not covering if there's some big emergency but I don't know what Lancaster Avenue is what's that 518 don't know what meter bridge is uh, the meter bridge blew up on August 13 because of the flood yep. uh, it needs to be replaced so, so but that's, that's a the bridge main, but that's the main flow but it's meter. the only reason why it exists is to gain access to the, the flow meter which, which is that a stormwater project sanitary sewer flow meter but it's a bridge knocked out by stormwater. That exists solely for sanitary sewer. I mean, the only reason why that's there is because of our sanitary sewer. It's part of our sanitary I'm sewer system. I'm just giving you another alternative, another interpretation. Oh, and what's Kirk's Run? Years. What is that one? Look at Kirk's Run. That's, uh, that's that a sewer pipe then. Is that done? In progress. In I think that one's in process, yeah. Rolls is done, but the bills have all come in. Yeah, I just have numbers that are in the system. Bill, do you have a ballpark premium of what it costs to fix something in an emergency as opposed to if we did it by, you know, as, as routine, I don't want to say maintenance, yeah. but repairing it is, how much more of a premium? Steve Norsini was working that up, and I don't, he and I have not talked about what he found out yet. I know that's something he's working on. So I think well, that's we important. had it with Rawls because that project was underway, so we had the estimates. Yeah, and as again, compared I to what it actually costs. I, I know he's working on it, yeah. and it's not Steve information I, I have. Yet. Why so is Rawls a negative number? Um, Bills haven't come in yet, have they? Yeah, it, it could be because there's purchase orders out there, and we just haven't spent down the purchase order yet, because those show up as negatives. So I have, I have all the purchase orders in here too. It's not just cash out the door. So that if, if there's a project, a purchase order shows up in the system as a negative number. I'm looking for and a number that's 2.5 million. As we spend million. down on it, positive numbers hit, and it ends up at zero. But the number, I thought we were looking at it for a number that's 2.5 million, right? And I don't see it there. That's a 1.4 or 1.8. Is that because of the rolls? Because you said two million is going back to the general fund, yeah. and two point five is the note. So two point five is what I'm looking for. That yeah, was I, in that was in the package for the measure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Rich, my, I got it all. I showed my, it last my point closing. is is that there should be money to, to get us through a year, whatever. There's one point. What is what was that? Yeah, we have money to get us through 2019. We will not run out of money unless there is an emergency which costs more than we have in the reserve there and then we don't have any money anymore. 
or if RHM charges us exactly as much as they said they would or more, which sounds unlikely, but there's a possibility that we could end up paying more than that. Well, we'll get notice if they do, and we can address it. They've already given us notice. They've told us it's going to be this much. We're budgeting for less than that because they've consistently charged us Because less. they haven't given us actual notice. They've given us... No, they've literally no. said this is how much we're going to charge. approved this budget, which budget. shows Radner's contribution. Well, then why, then why are we budgeting for that? Because they consistently end up charging us less. And so we're budgeting for what we think is realistic. I, so thought, you're ta I thought you were talking about the, the, the new equipment that you're talking about. Um, RHM is going to be doing a, what, what did you say, a separator or something? It's not an intercepted that Intercepted. That's not even. That's not even. That's not even. That's not even. So, so be new this, is, this is, I'm sorry, I had the wrong spreadsheet open. Um, th these are the amounts we've actually spent on the projects. That's the 2.1. Okay. Um, and then we have open encumbrances for uh, some of these are the same project, just remaining amounts owed, but that's the other 1.7 million. Uh, that gets us to 3.8, um, and then the Got another 700,000. Yeah. Um, what are you maxed to? So. Well, then so I, the other part of this is the the capital plan, and, and that's where we get to this four another 4.2 on top of right. what we were just looking at. And none of this is included in the uh, the forecast. We only included enough so that the amounts from the note would cover next year's capital. So all these projects would not be funded next year. So I, the the notion that the the note gets us back to square one, um, or funds plan plan all of our planned projects is isn't accurate. And there's Tons of projects that are out there that aren't part of that. Note. Does it make sense? Funds are foreseeable pr projects for the next year. Uh, no. Just literally no, a list. No, we got a whole list of other projects that aren't part of that. Things that already note. happened or in progress right now. None of these things. Would it make sense to defer talking about this until we have at least a rough idea of what it would take to repair the sewer system? Uh, so I we think can so. Talk That's about a whole, whole separate funded, discussion, right? right? I would say, yeah, that would be suggestion to do that to discuss how you're going to do this because then we get into like you mentioned before how are we going to maintain this moving forward because we're basically not doing the cleanings and everything else we should be doing so there's a lot that factors in like Bill said you've got those other numbers don't pay attention to those those are ones that as the board discusses those can all be set it's just those are like placeholder so I agree don't focus on those that's a conversation for next year yeah I just I don't want to vote uh, I don't know how many, 50% increase on this, and then we decide six months later that we need to go and do a bond issue in order to pay for totally new sewer lines all throughout the wards, and we could have just lumped it all into the same bond. Yeah. That's why I think what we recommended 10%, which was approved last year, and then work on what is that going to look like in the change. How quickly could we get that information? We have, to, we have to approve it's it's months. Months. it has to come back to you to be approved for you said December plan to be looked at in December 10th we should be in front of you with just the proposal right yeah and then the plan itself will take months to there's miles and miles of so yeah. part of that proposal is how far in depth do you want to go do you want to know the conditions of all you know or areas that <coughs> you know these are bad so those those other projects that you just had up there mm -hmm. the ones that Aren't They're going to be covering that seven hundred thousand, right? No, these no. these total four million one hundred and eighty thousand. Yeah. So these are these. Wait, meter bridges are in there. Can I ask my question, please? Are these need to do? Would like to do? What are these? So I'm going to do my best, Steve, <laughs> and, and say yeah. that based on the information he has, these are the projects that he's identified as need to be done. And he's, he's, through his own engineering, has prioritized them in terms of years. Um, so whether a project showed up in one column versus another is a product of prioritization of the need and trying to uh, spread cost out, um, understanding that you can't have it all done in one year. You, some of it has to be spread out over years. And resources, right? Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's 
that's where this list comes from. As, as with most of the capital projects, that's where it comes from. And that's part of the problem is, is, is Steve knows what he's talking about, um, but obviously there's things going on outside of his view that um, so always end up in one of these discussions. And a lot of that will involve, I think, from the guys who actually work with it every day. <coughs> Those guys know the system intimately, and we found lines in areas that didn't know they existed before. Some run under buildings or garages or under homes, so all of those, not knowing what those conditions are. When you fix one of these sewers, how, what's the life, 30 years, 100 years, 10 years, do you have an idea? I mean, Steve I says 50, 50. Okay. with the pipe that we're using. So, it's so you must need to start planning for it. Or tear it out of By the it time you get it all done, you'll have to do it again. Except now Funny, but no one wants to use those apart. So this $4 million figure is not separate from what we would be anticipating to hear back from us. You, know, you need this many dollars to fix the sewers. This would ultimately be a part of that larger project. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we're looking at funding this with bonds. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so total up the grand total through 2024 right there. What's that? What's that number? Twelve million three fifty nine. All right. So that's it. That's the that's the bond. How much? Oh, well, we go over the twenty. But uh, uh, yeah, the, the amount start bond. What, what, what is that? What is that number right there? It's like fifteen. Fifteen seven. Fifteen seven. 15, seven. Yeah, 15, seven. So that's fifteen million. That's the outside, and we do that sometime in twenty nineteen. That's Steve's well, no, problem. You can't. You can't fund. We're gonna need. We don't have bids for a lot of these things. That's just his <laughs> best. <laughs> why why, why borrow money? Why borrow money on a project that may not get done for another seven years? So that we can get everybody to focus on the but real budget, the not this. That's fine, but that's the number. You need to keep that in your back pocket. That is the back pocket, but that's whatever it is. We'll we'll squeeze that down to whatever we can. But we already put four and a half million in notes. Then we're going to have another call. It what you want? Fifteen, ten. That's going to be the number that. They need to fix the system. That's separate borrowing. It won't affect operational costs on the sewer. It won't affect the debt service. Will affect taxpayers. Otherwise, it won't. The debt service on that's over a million. Million one. Million one. That's just the debt service. Right. And that presupposes we don't discover any new projects. Well, this doesn't that. involve any major trunk lines either. Yeah. Those are going to be a whole different ballgame. So what, what, do you have an idea of what the out the door number is with like the, the everything? Fifteen plus what? I mean, what are those? Forty million. Any, any That's number. That's what we need the assessment for. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And then there's a like maintenance a yeah. maintenance factor that has to be figured out. Right. That's the other side. Two hundred fifty. That's wow. right. You got to trim that down. Like Twenty-five million. We got to trim it. Probably twenty. So, so please. All right, so uh, is, there any, is there any, is this? No, that we just, uh, as, so as it stands now, I mean, we factored in the 10% increase that <laughs> last year's board suggested uh, and approved by a vote. Uh, but this board will have to decide if they want to stick to yeah, that uh, or uh, do something else. Great job, though. There you go. And you'll need that from us next week. Yeah. But again, similar to the capital projects, the discussion around the sanitary system is uh, it's much larger than tonight and next Monday. Mm -hmm. So really what we're asking for is direction as a placeholder to, to buy us the time we need to, to meet and to answer these questions and do the do the, the engineering study so that we can work with real uh, engineered numbers versus um, swag. Well, I, the, the numbers Steve's present, provided I, are, are pretty good, yeah. but they're just what he knows. We, he, what's not in there is what he doesn't know, and that's what the study should help shed some light on. And we're not sure if there's utility conflicts that are going to be part of this as well. Oh, yeah. And then the other factor is, is can we take advantage of stormwater projects while we're doing these? At the same time, open the ground up, maybe jump in and share yeah, things. So there's a, a lot of this. Yeah, so I mean, it's, again, it's a stop. Wouldn't come on that. 
Um, we haven't done any stormwater project. But that, so that's that's where it's at now, heading into next Monday. Is uh, I'll stop again. So, really, you you are for 2019. You're setting up for a lot of borrowing. Uh, potentially. Because you're going to borrow for all the projects that were for the regular budget. Then there's a borrowing for the sewer. Which one's storm or stormwater? Be another one. Why would that was factored in though that when stormwater that that fee would pay for the reimbursement of the bonds that was the intent yeah. the original intent of that. Yeah, I I think we'll talk a lot of next year about borrowing. I don't know. If, I if thought we'll get to the point where we're ago. actually pulling the trigger on it. To be honest, uh, on, on it which takes one? us a long time to figure out which projects we're going to do. So I mean, it could take nine months just to figure out a project list. For which project? Any of them. The sewer projects? Yeah. Sewer. For you guys to figure out the projects or for us to agree on a project? The latter. I, I say we as <laughs> all of us. We're all in this together. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So but it, it takes us a long time to figure out projects. Well, so I but uh, that's just a response to we're setting up to borrow a lot of money next year. As I sit here now, I we're gonna have a lot of conversations about it. I don't know if that means we'll actually be pulling the trigger. I, I don't see, I see it as pretty well laid out. You laid out the projects on the other spreadsheet. You have the sanitary sewer. They're going to do an assessment and come up with some other number. And you're going to want to borrow the money. I, I don't see why that wouldn't get done in 2019. Okay. I got it. You take some line items. Your lips to your ears. Well, you know, no, I, I, I probably won't support it, but... <laughs> but but it, it's it's laid out there. You got the projects. All you got to do is just say this one, yes, no. This one, yes, no. This no, one. Sewer why wouldn't you support that? Um, I, I'm not going to support thirty million dollars in new borrowing in 2019. It's crazy. And on top of 20 mil, 20 percent tax increases. No, we we have to. Is there a 20 percent tax increase? Um, yeah, there's 10 10 percent on the sewer. There's 10 percent on it built into that budget right there. You understand that's not how percentages work, right? <laughs> no. All right, wise guy. Nine percent is what it is. Nine percent. There's ten, there's two there's two ten percent increases. All right. It's going to be twenty percent more. Well, you think what you need in order to move forward and for us to have a subsequent conversation next week? Yep. I think so. And we still have to change the ordinance because it's uh, below po below policy. No, you no, don't, we don't have to change you. the ordinance. Well, we're going to wait and see what. Oh, because you guys are going to make up a million dollars in your budget. Well, if we don't, yeah, if we don't come up with a plan to replenish it, then we'll have to consider changing it. Right. But that'll happen next year. That'll happen next year. If you if you can come up with a million dollars, go ahead and do that. We should have done that in the first place. Good thing Bob's not here. <laughs> He's rolled out a couple proposals that would have done that already. <laughs> so, but those weren't approved, so we'll, All right. we'll keep looking. All right. All right, do you have what you need? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Um, so, unless you have anything else. Okay, is there anything else, gentlemen? Public, public comment. Uh, uh, I don't have a public comment on the last, yeah. but if. I think you should put you should have that. Yeah. Well, we got a lot to say. I'm not going <laughs> to. Sarah, did you want to say something? No. Yeah. I wanted to say two things. The seniors Please think you're up. screwing us to the walls. We're not going to get an increase in Social Security. We're going to get an increase in our medical insurance. $10 a month is a lot to a senior. Yeah. So that's the first thing I'm going to say. The second thing I'm going to say is Skunk Hollow Garden is raising funds to buy Thanksgiving meals. And if anybody would like to contribute, if we'd been downstairs, it would have been televised. It would have been more effective. But I'm just going to say, if you want to give some money, send a check to Skunk Hollow Garden, Kara Susan Stern, 202 Midland Avenue. Well, we have already bought 26 turkeys and 11 breasts and some hams. This is the only fresh food that loaves and fishes gets. And we have 650 people to when, have a Thanksgiving. When so. do you want the money by? 
as soon as you can. Because okay. what we don't give by in food by Thursday, we give them a check, which they're really grateful for because it fills the holes in when they've got an emergency. Those women down in Prospect Park are all volunteers. They do an extraordinary job. But I hate to talk about it because the thought of you raising taxes. Rich. I have reduced my water use by 25% this year. So my sewer fee is going down. I also wanted to speak about, I've spoken to uh, Steve McNellis, and what I heard from him a couple of weeks ago is he was holding in reserve $500,000 for the misgiven recycling when the township's going to have to pick up what they don't accept because we don't do it properly. If we educated our people, we might not have that problem. That was a couple of weeks ago, Bill. I see the cross. We need to educate the people in the township how to recycle properly. Bob, I thought that was part of... I walk my neighborhood every Friday. I can't parks. tell you how many people have yeah. their recycling in closed plastic bags and Republic won't take them. So we need to do a massive education program as to proper trash and proper recycling. I think we could save quite a bit of money, right Bob? That's, that's going to go in every tax bill. It's all going to be detailed. It's, it's well, got to be detailed and the backyard waste pickup is a lovely thing but for the township truck to be driving every street looking for yard waste is a waste of money. Let's get more efficient. Bob, Thank can you. I just touch on something real quick? Sure. Thank um, you, the, Sarah. The, at the beginning of every year, could you put a sticker, yay big, and slap it on every recyclable can of what, basically touching what Sarah said, what you recycle, what you can't recycle, you know, and how to do it. If you did put a sticker on it, would that be cost effective? But they don't use public? cans, they put them in plastic yes. bags. Well, they, I, I, I well, understand, but, but you can at least start with maybe 80% of the people still use cans and you can you start there. You can put there. it in a plastic bag, don't pick it up. I don't think we can sticker people's property. No, <laughs> the, not their property. The, uh, if, it's our, if it's our recyclable can that we've given them, then it's really our property. No? Bob, Bob, I'll, I'll, let, I'll, I'll let you look, look at into that and find a statute. That, that just case. send a letter to the this is, this is with the flyer that's going to go on the tax bills. It is with the concerns. The flyers are already done, but they're going to the tax bills. But, the, but Bob, people have to understand if you get a bottle of Gatorade and you drink three quarters of it, you leave the rest of it in it, it's not recyclable. They won't take it if it's contaminated pizza boxes, anything like that. So we need to educate people to do it better, which will save money. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Okay. I don't know what they've just got. Anything else? All right. Any other motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes seven. Thank you, gentlemen.